<laughs> What's happening, guys? If you love this podcast and you really want to support us, you can go to haveawaredpod.com. You can get yourself some merch, something like this hoodie, something like that T-shirt. There's plenty of stuff for you to go and have a look at there. There's also links so you can buy tickets to the Have A Weird live shows and also tickets to mine and Dan's tour shows if you want to come and see us do stand-up. That's all at haveawaredpod.com. We also do an extra episode of the podcast every week on patreon.com slash have a word pod. Sign up on Patreon, get the exclusive Patreon episode. There's also some discounts on merch, discount on live tickets, but the extra episode is only on Patreon. That's patreon.com slash have a word pod. Bye, Felicia. Bye. <laughs> he licked his lips like, I'm going to get you. <laughs> I'm going to get you. Back in the game, back in the game. I tell you what. You know, because we got used to doing this like six times a week and then three times a week and sometimes four and whatever. Oh, yeah. These two days a week are so nice now, aren't they? I have picked Carl up before. I was like, wait. I was driving with one hand. I was all happy. I've walked in. Studio's amazing. You really appreciate it when you don't see it as much. You look and feel about fucking 10 years younger. <laughs> there, was a, there was a point at the end of May where you were hairy as fuck. <laughs> Just like grimacing at me down a Zoom angle, like, what the fuck are we doing this again? And now it's like, oh my God, fresh. I've got gigs. I've got live. I've got things coming up. I've got a haircut. It's amazing. Oh, we have got gigs. We have got gigs. Now, obviously, this goes out Monday for uh, most people. Patrons get it a couple of days early, but. Yes, they uh, do. Um, <laughs> we've got, we record this on Fridays now. So we've got, I've got two gigs tonight. I've got three tomorrow. I've got one on Sunday. Stop fucking hoarding all the gigs, you <laughs> whore. <laughs> yeah, I'm so excited. I just remembered, is the door closed, Carl? Because I just called Adam a whore really loudly <laughs> and we're in a place of work. It's not. It's wide. We, the um, doors are wide open. Should we point out the new addition to uh, our backdrop? So as uh, our regular watchers will know, uh, and anyone listening hasn't got a fucking clue what we're talking about, but in our studio, we normally have a Rick and Morty poster here. We've replaced it with... <laughs> it, uh, a print that's been made for us by a listener and a, a lovely girl I used to work with called Ellie. Now, on Instagram, she is at Ellie Fairway. That's E L L I E F A I R W A Y. And she's made us a quote from episode 20. And we know that because she's put episode 20. I love 20. that she's done that. That's a lovely touch. It's so nice, isn't it? What's this say, Dan? It says, do you know what? I can't remember the context of it, but you I know, well, you know, in exact, you know, you look at something, you're like, let's have a word that. I can, I That's can, one of yours, though. No, you said it about me. No. You did. So it says, pasty, pasty, salt and pepper chicken, come, ass, come, suck me dick, suck me dick, tits, pasties, chips. If you've never listened to the Have a Word podcast or watched on YouTube, this is what it is. <laughs> you're like, oh, those words. Probably not for you, then, ducky. So we got a would you rather that said, uh, would you rather something or every thought you have appears in a speech bubble above your head? Oh, And yeah, you said yeah, yeah. that would be my speech bubble. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and now, weirdly, it's just above my head <laughs> as, as a speech bubble. Uh, we've got some, people are sending in some amazing stuff and people are being, like the, the feedback from everyone's amazing. I, yeah, and stuff like that. I really love it. And I also got recognised in a restaurant on uh, Wednesday. And I want to thank uh, Rianne <laughs> for making my wife pretty jealous, I think. <laughs> she was, was fuming, wasn't she? She was, she was sort of fake fuming, but you know when, because like Laura's got a fucking good sense of humour, but you know when you're like, there's about 90% banner, 10% truth on this shit. <laughs> So I was in a, doing the 50% restaurant thing, 50% of food discount, you know, like get Using back to- Using our taxpayers' money to fund your dinner. <laughs> yes, mate. <laughs> I fucking, you know why? Because I'm a fucking taxpayer. Um, I was just on the way to the toilet and this woman stopped me. And I was like, I don't know. I honestly thought I'd just come out of the toilet and it was one of those, um, they didn't call it a unisex. They called it a- non Gender neutral. A gent, that's it. I was going to say non-gender specific, <laughs> gender neutral. 
toilet, which uh, is just go down there. To the, it doesn't matter if you've got a dick or a fanny toilets. Yeah. Uh, whatever you want over there, get your dick out, get your flaps out, whatever um, you need to piss out of. Amazing, go, go, brilliant. Uh, as we talked about on the Patreon the other week. Quick question before I'm we all, carry on. I'm all for it because I'll forget about this. How old were you when you knew women don't just piss out of their fanny? Okay, good. I'm really glad you asked that question there because um, that felt really pertinent. <laughs> 28. About 28. I reckon I was like 23. What? I used to think it just come out of the fanny hole. What were you doing watching soft porn? No, I I asked a woman about it for some reason. <laughs> <laughs> like, I asked someone a question. They were like, we don't piss out of our actual fanny hole. We have a little pipe. And I was like, oh. <laughs> little pipe? They do. They just have a little willy, don't they? Yeah, well, wherever it's coming out of, they don't want to be sharing a bathroom you, with men, do they? You're such a wordsmith, aren't you? Yeah, he is. Got a oh. pipe. It oh. is a little pipe. It's just a hole, isn't it? Just a small. It's a hole, hole connected to a pipe. Yeah, but you can't see the pipe. You can, if you really try. I was today Jesus years old. Jesus Christ! <laughs> <laughs> the imagery of Adam there. I'm not even going to reenact it because it's so gynecological. And poor old Jade popped Where into the that. Where did that come from? G- G- Gynecological. Well, it's just in and around it, but I just said, you go, I can see your eye. <laughs> With your eye. <laughs> With your eye, I can see it. I think I can see the future. Jade's like, get off. Just come on, let's get this done. Mm, come on, Jade. <laughs> it's my birthday. You said I could do anything. I'm finding the pipe. I really, whatever, gender neutral bathrooms, I'm all for it if it's very modern, but there is going to be a lot of women going, oh, Oh God! Who was just in here? And I thought that was what was about to happen. And I'd only gone for a little, a little piddly, pi- piddly pee, and I came out, and she went, "Excuse me." And I honestly just, you know, that internal shame of being a bloke, where you're like, "I have made so many bathrooms a hate crime." I was like, "Oh," and she went, "I have been watching all your podcasts." And then I was like, "Fuck!" There was a family <laughs> near us, you know, because it was like near their table. So they were like, "Who's this guy?" And I was like, "No one you fucking know." <laughs> and she's like, "Oh, I loved it. I think it's been brilliant. The entertainment you and Adam have. I'm absolutely. I'm a massive fan. I'm sure you get recognised all the time." And I nearly social distancing means you can't do this. I nearly grabbed her by the arm to drag her closer to Laura. <laughs> she's like, "Could you just say that again?" And then I nearly went, "Oh, my, my wife." is and then i went of course i don't need to say my wife because she's listened to the podcast she knows it's laura i was like laura is gonna be so annoyed that this has happened and rianne's an attractive lady i was like thank you very much Mm, thank you enjoy your piss or shit or gender have a nice wee can i tell you around and i was so fucking happy laura's like piss off you didn't i was like yes mate if i was the one leaving that bathroom she wouldn't have spoke to me yeah she'd She'd have been like oh I'm never listening to that podcast again. Ad, can I just say, is it Adam Rowe from the Have a oh, Have a oh, oh my eyes. Oh my eyes. Who are you? Well, it doesn't sting your eyes, but it just ruins your nostrils. All right, okay. Which is, you know, can make your eyes water, can't it? I suppose. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I can't use that bathroom for my one hole now. <laughs> you what? I was just saying, you know, because oh, of the one hole thing. Anyway. But did you know that quite early on? I remember having a conversation with my bezzy mate, Fraser, when we were about 12, 13, stay over at his house, and we'd watch um, the free 10 minutes of porn on the porn, you know, like the adult the adult channel, is that right? Do 10 minutes at midnight, so, yeah. and then you'd be like, oh, God, oh, I want more, and like, there'd be, I think, I remember one night where it didn't code out to the, to the white noise grey screen. And we just got to watch two and a half hours of porn. It was like, yeah, free porn here. Oh my God. Um, I think it was then we were first discussing like, hang on. Doesn't, what's going on here? I wasn't 23 though. Like it was a good, it was like teenage. Yeah. I used to want to set, et cetera. Remember that? Oh yeah. Yeah. Did you ever, <laughs> did you ever get off to that? No, I know what it is. Like Euro trash and oh, all that. Shit. Yeah, it was that sort but of thing. But Carl's like that, isn't he? He's like, no, I didn't. I masturbated while reading the classics. I crack <laughs> one out. I crack one out to Dostoevsky. What were you doing, Adam? <laughs> I was cracking one out watching to an in-depth interview with an Eastern European woman who didn't know what day it was. 
Oh, I yes, we dance it. in this club. We have all of the outfits. This is outfit central here. <laughs> Little <laughs> ladder. <laughs> Go on, show us your pipe. <laughs> <laughs> That's why your dad thought you were gay for ages. Get your pipe out for the lads. <laughs> I think Euro Trash, and you can't talk <laughs> about Euro Trash that was on in the 90s and early noughties without being a hack comedian like, bloody hell, you were masturbating, and then Mr. Penguin came on. <laughs> <laughs> like, it, any, any comedian who I've ever seen try and do Euro Trash does the same bit because it's so <laughs> fucking true. There would be like a sexy two and a half minutes where like, oh, this is a Hungarian porn star. And you'd be like, oh my God, yes, 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 yes. And then it'd just be some fucking nonce in a penguin suit in France and you'd be like, oh God, and you're so close. And then the worst bit would be like, if he just popped up just as you were finishing and then you were like enjoying yourself still, but he's on the screen it's like, ah. But mate, that happened all the time. You know what I mean? You can't, you're 14, you can't stop. Like when you're in your bedroom having a wank and then your nan rings you and it comes up on your phone as you're finishing, you're like, oh God. <laughs> like the Bernie Mac bit. <laughs> what am I doing? <laughs> oh, hello. Oh, no. <laughs> Yeah, right, Adam, what are you doing? Ooh, what am I doing? Ooh, wanking to penguins. Have you ever rang Babe Station? Or something like that? Have you ever called in? No. Have you not? But I, I want to do it more than I've ever done. <laughs> <laughs> I've just decided we need to put something on the expense account. I, uh, I rang in once. And right. just giggled and put the phone down. Oh, yeah. I was like... 14 or something or when I, I like I was young and rang up and finally got through <laughs> and she went hi big boy what 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 do you want big boy or whatever mate like, that is call center hack in it <laughs> you're right big boy hello big boy what are you what are you up to today and I just went <laughs> and just put the phone down it cost me six quid <laughs> Do you know what? I bet that happens. I bet that happens about 43 times a day. And they've what? There'll be an industry name for them. Yeah, fucking. We've got a giggler. We've got a giggler. <laughs> oh. You're all right, love. So, yeah, I'd love to try and freak one of them out. Are we, hey, what are you up to? <laughs> yeah, nothing. What are you up to? <laughs> I bet they've heard it all, though, haven't they? Do you reckon? Does it? I, I, I always just think, like, if I was ever lonely, right, like single, living on my own, bored. Yeah. Could you just ring them for like a normal chat? Well, I bet. I'd love to put a percentage of it. I bet about 30, 40% of the, of the regular phone money they make is from people who think they've got like sad, lonely men who mm. think they've got a connection. And like, it's probably the same. No, but I don't want to be that guy. I just want to ring up and go, listen, love. Right, obviously, you, because they have it on silent on the telly, don't they? they? Just have a bit of music so you can't hear what she's saying. Just like, and she's just on the phone. So, right. <laughs> what does so it do? Like, yeah. I understand that you've got to like pretend that we're talking sexy here, but I just really want to like slag me dad off. Is that all right? What if you rang up like depressed? Like, I know you, I know no one can hear me on the TV station and you've got to keep thrusting. I've just been so lonely since Carol died. <laughs> she's got to I've be been like, thinking about suicide. I'm thinking about ending it. And she's like, tell me more. Oh, no. Tell me more. Like, have you You've got, a car? got so much to live for. <laughs> blah, 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 blah. Oh, don't do it. Think about these big tits. <laughs> there must be. I'm now thinking about it. Babe Station must have a code word to get, like, the Samaritans online, too. Listen, Adam, I can't talk anymore. You're too sexy. But Nigel from the switchboard is going to put you in touch with someone who can help. Mm, good luck. Uh. Never in my life have I felt this uncomfortable. I've never felt this, like, weird. And out. I, bet they are. I, bet they, I bet they do. I bet they have to be like, love... Love. Don't do it. But they, on the TV screen. Don't like, do it. <laughs> don't do it. <laughs> I think that's how you convince people to not kill themselves. <laughs> Listen, just don't do it. There you go. Problem solved. That's how you stay alive. I'm having a really hard time with my phone bill. It's 
423 quid a week. Well, just pay it then. <laughs> well, never mind that. But don't kill yourself. Keep keep on the line. Keep on the line. <sighs> Do you reckon that on like commission? Or like a flat hourly rate? Do you reckon no. if they keep you on the phone longer, you, they get more money? Yeah, good question. I think you might get paid. Yeah. But then again, if you're getting asked for, it's a bit like being a headliner in a comedy club, isn't it? You're going to earn more money. Yeah, they put like, the fucking open spots on first, don't they? Those first few hours. Do you think, when's the key time for Babe Station? I think first few hours is when more people are awake. Or maybe they put the open spots on at the end then, like in America. Headline first. Yeah. And by like, I've never seen it at 5am, but some ropey one with like one eye and a fucking stump. Hello. I don't hear so good, you're going to have to shout up. Welcome to Babe Station, late right night. It's too far, wasn't it? It's too far. <laughs> it, was the, it, was the, it was the way you were holding you. Do you know that gave me a bit of anxiety because it's so rare that I go too far and Adam's going, no, no, no. I'm like, oh, shit. I wasn't going, no, no, no. I was oh, really, right, really okay, enjoying good. it. I, th- I thought you were going, Dan, we're going to we're gonna have to restart the episode. I was like, oh, shit. Oh, absolutely not. Babe Station. Uh, what about, when does Babe Station, is it not just on all day now? Oh, you can't have Babe Station on in the afternoon. Just, you've got to at least let the kids get home from school. Oh, yeah. Who's ringing base station at 8.45? Oh, yeah, you're on rush hour <laughs> with Mandy. <laughs> Why uh, do they all sound like bricklayers? Yeah, because they're the fucking C team, aren't they? They're like the third choice goalkeeper. <laughs> They're the, they're, they're the Rob. They're the Rob Green of Babe Station TV. Up a wage. Hi, uh, it's Monday. I'm on drive time, right? And as I've heard, we've got a rule: no wanking in traffic. Ooh. Oh. Uh. So, looking forward to gigs, then. <laughs> That's funny. I what? I did a gig in a, ga- a garden yesterday. Did you? With Freddie? Yeah, with Freddie Quinn and Rob Moore Holland, mashallah. Oh, I've just pressed the thing. <laughs> my, my chair's just lowered. <laughs> I, uh, I'm on glue today. I'm in a really good mood. Um, I did a gig in a garden and not done one before. How was it? It was weird, wasn't it? Really good. I had a very good time. I am. Um, I've had those two couple of gigs finding my feet. And I've said it on the podcast, but now I'm actually starting to enjoy it. One thing I'm not good at yet is remembering the order of my set. (laughs) That skill has sort of eluded me in the five months. The bits are coming out right. My timing's good. The new bits are working. The old bits that were I want to keep are good. But I just sort of can't cook. Like I'm having that moment in the middle of a set going, <laughs> you know, when he's like slightly too long where I'm clearly going, the fuck am I talking about? <laughs> but um, there is something very unusual about being in someone's garden with a microphone that Rob Mulholland has put on slightly too loud. You know, we just shut the door because we don't want our colleagues in this like office building to hear us shout, whatever we were shouting. Well, someone's paid for a garden gig, but their neighbours don't want to hear pasty, pasty, was, salt and pepper chicken, come ass, come. It was, yeah, very loud. And this isn't any in any way a criticism, but you know everyone keeps talking about this new circuit that we've got, indoor gigs, online gigs, and uh, garden gigs, and there's, there's some pub garden gigs. I can see who's going to thrive in this. And it's the people who've got fucking gears and experience who don't go, this is my set. This is the stuff I'm working on. I'm doing it. Now, I know we've talked about this before. I know there's something quite like purist about that, but you're in a fucking garden. And it was like I did a live stream gig and I'm not going to talk about the app that did it, but started talking about like pussy smelling. And you're like, it's a live stream gig and you're on first and everyone's watching on their laptop. They've just got the kids to bed. They're like, oh, we watched the we watched this live stream gig together on a Saturday. And it, all of us, you're like, that's not the right bit for the situation. No. And I felt that last night. I was like, not that anyone had a bad gig, but I think you've got to be adaptable. That's how it felt. Like the one we're doing together on Sunday in Liverpool, that's going to be a gig gig, isn't it? Yeah. But someone's garden. There's just a tone to it. Like, 
there were kids who weren't allowed to be at the gig. The, the owners of the house were really good like that. They had them in the front garden playing, but you could hear children playing. <laughs> Like there is like there is oh, that God. puts a slight limit on what you feel like. Oh, okay, let me uh, yeah. dive into this. I bit. can't do my Michael Jackson routine when you can actually hear children. <laughs> do you know what I mean? I can't be uh, I can't be on a fucking empty crate of beer going. Well, you know those kids should be gratefully fuck them. Oh, <laughs> While yeah. someone's next door going slides. It's a It's amazing the difference, isn't it? When people come to us, and when we go to them. If as a comic you can't distinguish between the two, you're gonna have bad gigs because yeah. when people come to your comedy club, like you said, you're on my territory. Yeah, it's my fucking, house. If you don't yeah. like it, then leave. <laughs> literally, if you're in their house, <laughs> like in literally their house. their house. I nearly was like, oh, can I use your toilet? I was like, oh my god, it's gonna be a family toilet. So yeah, have you done a garden gig at all yet? No, no. If you needed a poo, would you have gone? I didn't even go for a wee. I just went in the bushes across from the house, and there, and there was like a. I went over the road. I just thought, I can't. Oh, it's too cringy. I and see it. That, that's something that I... Because I, I, I knew you were going to be like that. Right. I, I'd do a poo in someone's house. If I'm doing a gig for them, for a bucket split. Is it a bucket split? Yeah. Yeah, I'm shitting in your house. <laughs> <laughs> toilets or no toilets. <laughs> yeah, but, but yeah, everyone was... That's the rules, isn't it? They've got 35 people in the garden. Someone needs a plop. If you don't like it, you shouldn't have put it on. I... In, I'm just enjoying gigging at the moment, but this whole thing, I keep hearing it from Freddie mainly, who's like, oh, let me tell you how everything's going to work. And I'm like, I love Freddie, but my God, sometimes I'm like, do you, do we have conversations or do you just tell me how life is? Because that's how, it, let me tell you what I've been uh, just, uh, pontificating about. You know, he speaks confidently with no research. It's one of my favourite things about him. Sometimes I'm like, Freddie... Do you want to discuss it, or do you want to just tell me how it is? <laughs> okay. No, no. How it's going to be. But I, yeah, I just, I don't know. I found myself thinking about us and whether we do a garden gig, because he was like, I think these are going to be around next summer. And I think beer garden gigs, I've done a couple of, are great fun, because you're in a pub. They're going to be around next summer. People's garden gigs aren't. People want gigs in their garden at the minute. And when I say people, 20 people so far in the whole country have done garden gigs, maybe. It's because they're dead bored. People are bored and they can't go out to the theatre or to the comedy club or whatever. They can't go. So the people who love comedy have gone, yeah, we'll just do one in the garden. Like they've seen that it's available and they've took it. When when you when all the stuff is available, people aren't doing that. It's of its time, isn't it? It's of this yeah. time. And it's great. I think it's brilliant. I seen this is a Scottish comedy promoter, Alan Anderson, who divides opinion at, at best. Hi, Alan. <laughs> and the other day, he commented on Freddie's Freddy's thing about the garden gigs. Like, is this the future we're working for? And it's like, no, Alan, it isn't. But it's the present we've got to put up with. Alan, it's the rent we're working for. <laughs> Jesus fucking Christ. Pull your head out your backside. It was like... Alan, sorry, hi, mate. You're all right. I'm available for bookings from September onwards. See you in Leeds. Alan's been running those drive through gigs, which some comics have really enjoyed. I can't think of anything worse. I'd much rather do 20 people in the garden than 200 people honking the horn every time they find something funny. It's just not for me. Like I, we've, I'm, glad we've done, I'm glad I've done a couple of them, though. I might never do another garden gig. I, last night, I'll remember it. Yeah, yeah. We did a gig. Are we allowed to talk about what we did? Or are we not? I think we can now. <laughs> we did an underground indoor illegal yeah, we, gig. So I ran an illegal gig. We're not going to say where. But we ran a very socially distant, distance, <laughs> possibly illegal gig. Yeah. And it was fucking brilliant. It was me, Dan, Justin Moore, I was Alfie Brown and Danny McLaughlin. I will never, f as long forget as I live, gig. I will never forget that gig. It was great as well, wasn't it? The energy was amazing. Everyone who wants to be there was there. And it was just fuck. And I'm kind, I'm kind of gutted that they're legal again now because I wanted to keep doing them. <laughs> yeah, Like, but I booked the one we're doing Sunday. That's indoors. And I booked that in before the government said, oh, go ahead, do indoor gigs again. I thought that was an outdoor gig. No. Oh, I love it. it it's designed so that it looks like it's outdoors. Right, yeah, like okay, the in, great, the great, inside great. of that building, is it looks like a street. Oh, okay. It's I really gorgeous. It's a birdies in Liverpool. But we were going to do that anyway. I was like, fuck it. The government are onto it, though, aren't they? Because they've just ho hiked up the fine for running an illegal gig. But I just won't pay it. Well, they're not going to put me in prison. It, it, <laughs> what are you in for? 
<laughs> I don't give a fuck me mate when nonsense, who did you kill when nonsense no. are getting suspended sentences I feel pretty confident that running a legal gig is not going to land me in juvie you're doing five to eight years <laughs> <laughs> what for putting on comedy a fucking illegal poetry night i love that atmosphere and i love this is this is something without wanting to sound too wanky this might the way we're heading now it might be on the road to mending and you know when people like second wave shut down i'm not sure it's i think it's going to be localized i think the government are going to try and keep everything open apart from if your town goes to shit which is what they've been doing Next year, there might never be another garden gig or a driving gig. Or, 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 you might never, there might never be a need for an illegal gig. I'm sort of glad that I've done one of each. I feel like, I, but that, I mean it, that I will always remember that. Yeah, it was speakeasy it was shit, wasn't it? mental. There's bars themed now on speakeasies, which were the, the illegal thing of their time. We're not allowed to sell alcohol, but we've got a little place that you you know you knock on whatever, and it was weird enough. That, that illegal gig, we, <laughs> it's funny to call it illegal constantly. We didn't advertise it. We did it by word of mouth. We got 80 people in a room that holds 150. We distanced it properly. We got a bill together that was just great. And everyone smashed it. Like, everyone smashed it. Yeah. Watching Alfie Brown that night was so fucking brilliant. He was on absolute fire. You walked on him within 20 seconds of compared, and people are dying, laughing, and clapping. Danny opened, murdered. I did five or ten in the middle with uh, Alfie. It, it was, was so good. It was dead, dead good. I'm just looking for... I've got three gigs tomorrow at Hot Water. Five o'clock, seven o'clock, half nine. You're back, baby. Oh, I've seen what they're doing. They've got like a, a a disinfectant gun spraying the whole venue. I'll show you the video in a minute when we take a break. Um, I just... like It's like a few weeks ago when we thought we were going back. My mental health was incredible for a week because I was like, I'm going back to work. And then the day before, we got told to fuck off. They're not going to do that this time. And even if they do, I think a lot of comedy clubs are just going to go, we're just open and mate, like, we can't fucking do that again. We've spent too much money. I think the localised thing is real. I think it really is. And I I don't know if it, it, I'm not criticising it. I'm not saying it's a good thing. You can't shut down everywhere again. You can't shut down businesses with a blanket to. rule. God, fucking Liverpool and Manchester, pull your socks up, everyone. Because <laughs> you are the mainstay of my circuit. And I... Oh, no. Hull's in a local lockdown. All right. Oh, my. Good luck to them. Oh, no. Norwich. Oh, what a shame. The infection rate's through the roof. Well, God bless. <laughs> Let's just hope you do everything sensible to get back up. We're back, baby. We're Woo! back. And we'll be back. After this word from our sponsors. What a pro. Shout out to Trans Alloy Wheels, one of our sponsors for this week's podcast. If you need anything doing to your car, bodywork, alloy wheel refurbishment, anything like that, they're based in Leeds and they can do anything for you if you're based in the Yorkshire area. These guys are a well-trusted, family-run business. If you need anything on your car, sorting out the bodywork, the wheels, jazzing up, fixing, these are the guys to see. Trans Allo Wheels Limited. They're dead good lads. Please go and see them. They've been a big supporter of the podcast from day one. We love them. They do amazing work. We've had so many good reviews from our listeners. We've gone and seen Charlie. Go and get your car sorted out and tell them we sent you. As Adam said, there's a massive list of things these guys do. And the best news is, as have a word listeners and watchers, you get 25% off everything. Make sure you let them know we sent you. You'll get a discount. They know we're sending them customers. Everyone's a winner. Now back to the podcast. I um, took Jade on a date last night. Absolute disaster from start to finish. <laughs> I was like, oh, this is going to be nice romantic. It was romantic for three and a half seconds. So, you know when you and Laura go out? Yeah, yeah, Is yeah. there, like, one of you who has, like, consistent bad luck with food? So, I'm not going to go on too long, but this is where being fussy plays into my hands. Pisses Laura off. She has now vetoed Pizza Express forever. She's like, I never want to go again. Yeah. She has to give permission for Nando's like a finger in the bum. Like a fuck it, like almost like most couples go, should we do anal? Well, maybe you can do anal this time. That's how she is about high street chicken. She's like, all right, you can have a Nando's. I'm like, oh, thanks, babe. So, so I'm fussy, but because of that, I play the most fucking pedestrian shots on the menu. We went for- You're just happy to get 
oh, a two. Margarita and garlic dough balls. The guy was like, you absolutely must try them. We have them with truffles. I might stick your truffles up your fucking arse and put the garlic butter on the dough balls because I'm a fucking normal person. Eight-year-old. So <laughs> so I, I do well because I play it safe. What do you get from McDonald's? Oh, well, Mac, yeah, just like a McChicken sandwich or sometimes a quarter pounder with cheese or... Sometimes the chicken selects. When you get a quarter pound of cheese, do you get all the stuff on it or do you, do you get it plain? Yeah, to get all the stuff on it. Okay. Not that bad so anymore. That's super fussy. I was, I'm, I'm better than I was, but if I get, I know exactly what you mean. If I order the wrong pizza when the margarita and then I see someone else's margarita and I've got like some fucking mess of like the Diavola and it's way too greasy and spicy, I get so pissed off. But usually I play it with a fucking straight back. So I don't know how you fuck a pizza up. I just get all the meat that they sell and some jalapenos. Yeah. Yeah. Like, put the sausage meat on, put the salami on, put the chorizo on, put the pepperoni on, put the spicy beef on, put the chicken on, put the ham on. Jesus Christ. And then put some... How oily is your pizza? You know when you get a pizza from a takeaway, is there any cardboard underneath (laughs) left or is it just like a floppy fucking grease paper? It does get quite greasy, but it's... It's the, that's the shit. See, that's how you're not fussy. You're like, all the meat, I'm not bothered. I'm so fussy that they could get that wrong. I'd be like, mm, it's too greasy. I don't like that meat. No. Oh, Go on. Hell. How do you do with look? So, I am not fussy. And I'll try stuff a lot of the time. Like, I, or I'll always be able to find something. I just want to eat. Once we're at the restaurant, I just want to fucking eat. Do you know what I mean? I will figure this out. Most of the time, <laughs> it'll be all right. We're in a restaurant. There's someone being paid to cook here. He's defo doing a better job than I do where I eat. For, I, I eat my own cooking. And this guy is a professional, so it, <laughs> it's probably going to be sound, isn't it? But have you ever? Have you ever gone? This is shit. I vetoed it last night. Oh. The second place we went to of three. So <laughs> there's a, a burger joint. Can in- I do this? <laughs> <laughs> There's a burger drink in Liverpool and it's in Leeds and Manchester as well called Almost Famous. You heard of it? Yes, mate. It's going to be amazing. Oh, it's it's fantastic. It's one of those like messy burger places. So the one I normally get from Almost Famous, it's it's two beef patties, cheese on both, and it, it comes with shoestring onions, spicy sauce, frazzles, the crisp, bacon. Oh, for fuck's sake. It's incredible. It's they called a Phoenix burger. Bacon flavoured fucking frazzle. Oh, they're all yeah. bacon flavored. On the burger, not as a side. On the burger. When you say messy, do you mean what I, I'm thinking you mean? Where it's like, you know, if you, We're like, people are trying to eat it as like a McDonald's advert, but you physically can't. You've got to yeah, sort of cut they, into they it. They provide you with a blue roll. I'm not even messing. Like they put a, like a kitchen roll thing right welcome to almost famous here you are sir here's your hipster burger there's a pack of space invaders we'll just whack them in as well and here's some milky bar buttons we'll whack them in as well here is a wet wipes blue roll and there's a bib and there is a bucket for you to shit yourself into welcome to almost famous goodbye like what here is a trough you fucking pig (laughs) it's phenomenal though isn't it amazing it's a great like it's a really great place what i do right that's what I do. Because it comes with two beef patties. <laughs> I slide one off and keep that as a side dish. God, me. <laughs> such a fat bastard. No, 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 no. Listen to me, listen to me. I like to eat a burger with everything, everything, right? But can you also just have a... I like a side of another burger. Nice one. That's just two burgers, isn't it? No, 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 no. It's a side. No, no it's not. It's just the beef. It's just cheesy beef. <laughs> No, it's just cheesy beef with a few toppings, a couple of frazzles, milky bar buttons, and bread. Do you know what I mean, though, Carl? Yeah. Like, it's hard to eat. Because, you, like what you were saying, it's hard to, like, get it all in. <laughs> so you slide one of them off. It makes it easier to eat. And then at the end, you just you get your knife and fork out, and you tuck into the side dish. When I finish my burger, you, know, <laughs> you ever finish your burger and just think, God, I'd love some meat. You last week, when we ordered from KFC, you asked for two Zinger Towers instead of the chips and the drink. Just get me two burgers. You literally ordered two burgers with two lots of bread. Fucking fatty arbuckle. My, my sister yesterday was like, is there a reason you think you've put on weight? <laughs> I was like, I don't know, okay. Well, <laughs> it's been difficult and it shut down. And in my head, I was thinking, probably stop getting two fucking Zinger Tower burgers, you fat whapper. <laughs> 
I'm just gonna slide that little bird chicken out. No, that's for daddy later. Mm, this this burger, that's for daddy now. But daddy daddy now is leaving a, pr- a present, a little surprise. I think it's totally reasonable. For daddy future. The burger's too big. So why is it more fat to make it a side dish than just try and force to eat it? Why is it worse? It's, it isn't, Adam. It isn't. Made, it <laughs> it <laughs> isn't. You're right. It's making it more manageable. It isn't. It's fair enough. It just sounds now, wrong. Almost Famous have uh, some... They have a, a load of topped fries as well. So you can get, like, all sorts of shit. So I was going to get the bacon bacon fries. That is bacon-flavoured mayonnaise with loads of crispy bacon on top of it. Like bacon rain, they call it. Right? Why are you looking at me like... I just resent some of the wording. What? Bacon rain. Some cunt. <laughs> some fat fucking fringe, floppy fringe, fucking hipster twat. When what should we call this bacon? Tristan, what should we call the bacon topping? <laughs> oh, let me think. Oh, let me just... Bacon rain. It, fuck off. Bacon rain. You fucking dickhead. And we actually call this an oily river. It's you know just what they call their plain fries. Juice. Winning fries. <laughs> Why? It's half chips and half sweet potato chips mixed together. Okay. Winning fries. I don't, um, mind, I don't mind that. That's not as bad. So, but they also do like salt and pepper. And like you get salt and pepper chips from a chippy. <sighs> Are you hungry? What are we doing here? <laughs> I feel like we're about to do a just eat order. We're definitely going to do a just eat order. That is getting about three fucking single <laughs> towel I'm going to slide some of that oh. extra burger. Sorry, go on. So they normally do like salt and pepper chips as well. So you get like salt and pepper seasoning with onions and chilies and stuff, right? Uh, with chips up, chip shop curry sauce. <laughs> pasty, pasty, salt and pepper chicken, come as come, salt and dick, salt and dick. Tits past these chips. Um, <laughs> <coughs> that should be a rule. You're never allowed to read halfway through this. You have to finish the whole thing. Yeah. So, and they also normally do some really good veggie options. And as you know, Jade tries her best to be a uh, vegan oh, and at least veggie. So she wants to get the mushroom and halloumi burger, which is what she normally gets from there. Okay. She went on the website. She checked the menu. She was like, oh, it's a full menu. We got there. They went, oh, it's only a reduced menu. So every restaurant in Liverpool at the minute and everywhere, because everywhere's doing reduced menus because of COVID slash they can't be asked doing a full one. It's like it was 10 years ago. You know where it's like you walk in and you're like, I'm vegan. And they're like, well, you're having that. <laughs> There's one option. Two <laughs> bread! <laughs> All right, love, sit down. <laughs> so they, they had like a vegan patty available at um, Almost Famous, but Jay was like, I don't want that. I wanted the mushroom and loomy thing. So I was like, babe. And we you had to book in advance, obviously. I was like, babe. She was getting like, you know, because she's having a bad time. She's getting a bit welled up. She's like, it's just really frustrating. I was like, I just grabbed her hands. I was like, we can go wherever you want to go. Good lad. Find somewhere on, on your phone, somewhere else. We'll go wherever you want. I promise. We haven't been out on a date for like six months. We haven't gone out since... Um, He's a new man. I was like, we can go wherever you want. She, and then there was um, a mirror in there where it like, you know, like a, a fun fair mirror where it makes you look weird. Oh, and it was making me look dead ugly. So I went, hey, look how ugly I look in that mirror. And that made a laugh. And then that sort of reset it. Right? You know, Adam, this is wonderful. Boyfriend right? work. And then, so she went, right, I found this place on Castle Street called Heritage. So we went to Heritage and we sat down and um, then they gave us the menu and Jade was like, oh, I'm going to get this and I'm going to get that. And then I made her leave. <laughs> <laughs> okay. It was the worst menu I've ever seen. I, I took a picture of it to and read it out. Just come away from almost famous. Yeah, because all day because I'm dieting again. Because like I, as we said on the Patreon, I'm going to be filming a couple of TV things next week, and I want to be as slim as possible for them. You don't want COVID tits, right? So, but I was like, I'll have that on our days. I'm going to have a cheat day, and I'd been fucking dreaming about this almost famous Phoenix burger for a week. And then I had to be the good guy and say, no, we can leave. And then I'm looking at this menu, this fucking menu. It, yeah, when you've left such a good place, it's got to be good though, hasn't it? So every time I do this, that's the end of a listing. This is a small plates restaurant. Bullshit, mate. Okay. What's a small plates? Ham hock croquette with heritage brown sauce. Home baked bread, caramelized onion, pale ale butter. Hummus, warm chickpeas, toasted seeds, tahini, and pomegranate. 
That just felt like words all jumbled up. So uh, some of these are, I swear to God, they've invented words. Boccaronas, which is just pickled anchovies, pickled fish. Padron peppers, sea salt and sumac. Do you know what sumac is? S-U-M-A-C? No? Copper, pickles, vegetable salsa and bread. Ox cheek ragu, macaroni and parmesan. Can we just say, don't ever be in the cheek of an animal, okay? You can have the tit, you can have the fucking bum cheek because there's a bit of meat on that. We don't need the cheek. That's going too far. You don't have chicken dicks. You, got, you can't have ox's cheek either. Local green beans <laughs> and kale. Why does it matter where the beans are from? Fucking racist. Local green beans and kale, tomato sauce, roasted peppers and caramelized garlic. Crispy cauliflower with satay sauce. Falafel, chopped salad, tahini and zoog. Rare roast beef with straw fries and a fried egg. I don't think that menu is written for it to be read out in a Scouse accent. Aubergine, Indian spiced beans and peas with roasted coconut on rater. Cheese. Please ask, ask for today's selection. <laughs> the one thing that was just... You've got cheese, but hang on, hang on. I can't even list what's different about the cheese. Local tomato, salad ricotta, broad beans and pea shoot salad. Whole Cornish sardines with garlic butter. And crispy coli fillet, parsnip puree and crispy capers and lemon. So I was looking at that menu, trying to do like a... Two of each. Uh, let's just... Smile at this, cause and Jade was dead happy. Like, oh, what? Tim? No, this she looked exactly. up and she seen me face, oh, right. and I, like she she seen through the f the facade. Is it facade? Facade. facade? facade, facade, that I was portraying with me face. She was like, "You hate it all, don't you?" And I was like, "Look, I'll eat something. I'll 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 get a few things and I'll try it." And she was like, "No, I don't want to do that." And I was like, "No, I will." And she was like, "No, I don't want to eat here now." Because then she decided that. It wasn't fair for me to suffer when I'd made the leave almost famous. Good work. Nice. And then we went to a... It's got a bit of a happy ending. We went to Neighbourhood. Have you been to Neighbourhood? Uh, only for drinks. So Neighbourhood is like a... Three restaurants and you got sat. Yeah. It's fucking good luck, that, isn't it, really? Yeah. Well, we booked that Heritage one in advance. And then we went into Neighbourhood because I was like, I'm sure my mates used to work here. Nick, who we, we worked, my very first bar job was in a, an Italian bar called Zellig's of Little Italy. Carl worked there as well. And our bar manager, Nick, uh, as far as we're aware, was working at Neighbourhood. So we walked in and he was just there. Oh, love it when that happens. And he was like, we'll sit you down. Now, Neighbourhood is sort of known as like a Scouse princess bar, isn't it? It's where all like, girls will be like, on Friday, oh, me and all the girls are going to Neighbourhood. And they'll have like maybe a few small plates and then it's Prosecco o'clock sort of thing. But it also does really nice food. So we went in, talking to Nick. We got a few starters. She hated them as well. We got a main. She hated that as well. But then she didn't mind the dessert. But we sat there for the whole time. And then we made Nick come over at the end. And he was just talking to us. We were just reminiscing about Zelligs and like how big a dickheads we were at the age of 18. And Nick seems like 20 years older than us, but he's only three years old. He's 31. Um, and then right at the end, he was like, I went, get the bill. And he was like, oh, no, 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 lads, all on me. And he gave us the whole thing. He was like, oh, it's for old times, see? And I just want to say, Jade is so fussy and she didn't like, she she ordered something she'd never had before. She ordered mushroom gnocchi, yeah. like the pasta thing. She's like, it's a bit vinegary for me. It's not my sort of thing. I loved everything I had. And the service in there, I still left a big tip for the bartenders because they were dead sound. They kept coming over to us, making, giving us things to try and making sure we were having a good time. And I just want to say, I had a bit of a preconception about Neighbourhood because I'd never been in before. And because I knew it was like, oh, we're going to Neighbourhood on Friday for Prosecco o'clock with the girls. I'd probably never gone in because of that. I can't recommend it enough. The food was lovely. As long as you know what you're having and you're not like Jade, who's like, I'll just try something because it's got mushrooms in. That is, he genuinely put it on his, he, you didn't pay. He just boxed it off, yeah. Fuck me. What a good egg. Yeah. And do you know what Jade was made up with? A lot of the time, I've told him about this, When and you've suffered at the hands of it as well, especially like in Edinburgh. You know when I bump into like an old mate or a fan or another comic in Edinburgh and you've got your mate with you or your missus, it's like your mate or your missus isn't there. They just look at you and talk to you. Like, Jay was like, do you know what I really liked about that? It was like he was paying more attention to me than you. Like, he was just a dead... I, like, I love him. a sound guy. Oh, yeah. And... uh 
I, I can't recommend it highly enough. I would be saying this even if he hadn't sorted this out, but Laura will be listening well. to this thinking of all the times that she's had to be like my fucking carer <laughs> who's taken out on a Wednesday. We take Daniel out for food. <laughs> I like food. Come on, Daniel, where do you like going? Three different places. <laughs> if they are not open, I do not want to go anywhere. No, he doesn't. He's like that. And you finish, like, it really gets like that. We got to Dodo on Wednesday, and I read the menu. I I just get that hipster vibe of you, like, are you going to fuck up pizza? Because there's some trendy pizza places. What's that place in Liverpool, not far from uh, Hot Water? Crust. Crust. And they do the slice. Shite. They do the big slice. Is that they do? No, a, that's American pizza slice. That's American pizza slice. American pizza slice. Just, I, I want to say this on record before I know what your opinion on it is. Other than John's on Bleecker in New York, which is the best pizza I've ever had, I think American pizza slice is the best pizza I've ever had anywhere in the world. It's tremendous. And I also, because at the start of Louis, where Louis C.K. Yeah. went in the pizza place before he goes down to the comedy cellar and he eats a slice, all of a sudden eating a slice has got new meaning to me. I particularly like it. When I was in New Zealand to do the comedy festival on the other side of Auckland, found one of these places, and I'm the kind of bellend who gets addicted. I was there every fucking day to the point where they were like, all right, mate, here again. Like oh, He worked at the pizza place where you could tell he was like, to kill you, this shit, pal. <laughs> well, three floors, this size of a fucking like, laptop. Like, I, don't know. Um, I eat a lot of American pizza slice in December. You know, when I'm doing those like marathon runs at hot water. <laughs> just like, you're just like, oh, I'm going to get a slice, man. Like, because you just get hungry throughout the day. I might get one tomorrow. <laughs> Comedy club wise, I think, I think that'd be an amazing option for a comedy club. You've got your comedy club and then you have one of those par open kitchens, have a big double pizza oven and get them in the big, they make them in trays, don't they? They can make pizzas in like rectangle trays for efficiency and just have it and be like, it's three quid a big slice. Yeah. And just, it's I, th already, I think it'd work really well. It's already cooked, half cooked. And, and it's they not just, crunchy. They you just, can eat it. They just it? put it in for another like minute to warm it up. I think it'd work great. I'm really hungry. You know, now we're having this conversation. Yeah, um, I love it. This is making neighborhood, me want Neighbourhood Liverpool, I just, he hasn't asked me to do this at all. And he didn't sort me, he sorted me out because we're old mates and I haven't seen him for about five years properly. I've bumped into him every now and then, but I had a proper catch up with him yesterday. He hasn't asked me to do this, but if you're looking for somewhere to go to eat, I had the popcorn prawns as a starter. I had a little bit of halloumi because Jay got it as well. And then I got the southern fried chicken dinner. It was done like Texan, what I imagine Texan style to be, with a biscuit and with, um, I think it was called spicy sausage gravy and southern fried chicken and fries. It was fucking gorgeous. And then Jade really enjoyed the dessert, which was, she got caramel banana cake. It was, it's just really good in there. And if, if you're looking for somewhere to go to eat at the minute, I, I definitely. I need to out. arrange a date night, and I think I might, I might literally act on this. I need to arrange two things: a date night with Laura, and really take her out, yeah. and that will justify me organising a piss up with you guys because I want to get on the beers, please. <laughs> I'm ready now. We're having a beer tomorrow. No, oh, where? Hot water. Why don't you come over? Oh god. Come and hang out. Just oh, jump god. on and do a set. No. Mm -hmm. Oh god. <laughs> Is our guest on? Yeah. Oh god. Oh, Jesus. I, so our guest today, which we can say because he's definitely coming and there's been no tech issues, um, is the brilliant star of Netflix. He's got two Netflix specials. He's had a HBO special. He's done loads of British TV as well. He's, his career, our guest today, if I could pick another comics career path, it would be his. He's a stand-up comedian. He's done a couple of little bits of other things, but he's never got into it to host a fucking game show or to be in fucking Hollyoaks or any no. of that fucking shit. He wanted to be a stand-up comedian, and he's done it. He's toured since he was very, very young, and then Netflix gave him two specials. They both did unbelievably well. Then he got offered the, to be the first ever Scottish person to get a HBO special, and he took it. It's Daniel Sloss. I think he's fucking brilliant. I... I was mates with Sloss before I'd seen him live, right? Because because of the Edinburgh Festival, I'd um, I'd hung out with him. I'd been to his house and had a few drinks because a lot of my mates are his mates. Happens though, doesn't it? You sort of, it's almost like you you get the nod because you're someone else's mate. You're like, oh, he must be all right because he's mates with so-and-so. Yeah. I'd seen clips of him. I'd seen like his Melbourne 
comedy festival gala. And he won't mind me saying this. And I thought, oh, he's good. He's a good comic. Yeah. Decent. I went and seen his show in Edinburgh. Uh, and I think he's as good as anything we've got in the UK. Fucking amazing. He I'm was. A- it was a flawless when, hour of stand When he started out, he was very early getting, like... Like good the, looking the buzz, young Scottish lad. And I was like, here we go. I've seen these guys before. They'll be gone. They'll be doing fucking Saturday morning television or some shit like that. And he has proved me very wrong. I think I knew I, I was wrong about that like the second time I saw him about a year later. And I'm like, oh no, holy shit. He's a, he's a much better. It's the, in stand up, you watch sometimes people get on stage a gig where you're like, this isn't a particularly easy gig or a great gig. It's not hot water on a Saturday. I think it was a Manford's gig in Lancashire. Like one of those pop-up gigs. They were fine. And Sloss was probably 20 years younger than the average age of the room. And he was so much the best act on that night. (laughs) I was like, this is, you're just watching something going, this is like a premier, a Champions League footballer just having a run out with the fucking... Under under twenties, I think it he's done like nine it. Edinburgh shows. Good That's nine God. hours of stand up, and he's and he's only a year or two older than me. He's like twenty nine. Do you think at nine Edinburgh shows, if you just slipped in a ten minutes from like eight shows ago, anyone would fucking notice? I don't think they would, but I also don't think he'd, <laughs> he'd ever do, do that because he he's a yeah he's a he's quality. a fucking grafter. I am looking forward to having him on. Should we have a little interval, get him in, and then get him on. Absolutely. Let's go and get some dinner and then we'll be back with Daniel Sloss. You can enjoy a word from either a sponsor. Maybe we're going to tell you about the merch. But what it's going to do, it's going to zoom in a bit. It's going to zoom out. You're going to see an advert we recorded two weeks ago and then it's going to zoom in and out again and Daniel Sloss will be sat on that couch. Jesus. It's amazing, isn't it? It's like the future. What's happening, guys? Today's episode is brought to you by Manscaped. Manscaped are the best male grooming products on the planet. They've only just launched in the UK. They've sent me and Dan a razor each, and I've got to say, proper top-tier stuff. This is the best razor I've ever used. It's the first time I've ever shaved me balls and not snagged the bag. The good auntie. I get the little, you know, I get a little bit of, like, over-the-pubes tub, and I nick that. I've just been using an old head trimmer. I've used this and you're like, oh, that's a slide, that's a glide. So you don't get that sting in the shower. Yeah, it's horrible. Uh, when you get like a, a little cut on your bag and then you get a bit of ball sweat seeping into the cut and you get sweaty sting. Mm, keep talking sexy, Adam. <laughs> <laughs> that's why Manscaped has redesigned the electric trimmer. This is it. They've engineered the greatest ball hair trimmer ever created. It's the new and improved Lawnmower 3.0 and it's just been released in the UK. It's smart as fuck. This is their third generation trimmer. It features a cutting edge ceramic blade to reduce manscaping accidents. And when I'm saying this is the best razor I've ever used, I'm I'm not messing, you know. I know it's easy to say that when you're getting sponsored by a company, but it, it's it's really, really, really good. It The battery's amazing. It lasts for an hour and a half, so you can shave for longer. It's water resistant. You can use it in the shower. You don't have to be shaving stood over the toilet anymore. It's sick. One of the coolest features is the LED light. It illuminates the way as you shave along so you don't get any nasty nicks. And they've just got an upgraded 7,000 RPM quiet stroke motor. The nicest bit, you get a load of kit when you get this sent to you. But the charging stand is charged by USB and it looks sleek as fuck. So you're not getting any whinging from your partner, your missus. It's going to sit in the bathroom. You're going to be proud of it. Look, don't take our word for it. If you're listening to this, watching it, pause the podcast yet. Go and order one for us. And they don't just sell razors. You can get all sorts of male grooming products from manscaped.com. And experience it for yourself. It, it's really, really good. Your balls will thank you. This is the important bit. Every listener of Have A Word gets 20% off. Get 20% off and free shipping with the code WORD. That's WORD, W-O-R-D, at manscaped.com. And make sure you use that code, otherwise they won't know that we sent you. That's right, 20% off, free shipping all over the UK and in America, actually. But you can use the code word, word, that's W-O-R-D. We should have picked a different word, because code word, word, just sounds clunky, doesn't it? You're not thick. You get it, word. It's word. Time to shave those balls. Should I shave yours now? Adam, should I shave yours? We'll just do that now. We'll show you. Oh, don't, you're meant to flinch. (laughs) Pev. Let's go. We're back. Don't you dare touch my buttons like that. I felt, I felt that was like... Invasive. Off. Yeah. Do what you want, Welcome babes. back. We have got 
Scotland's own. <laughs> a comedian, you may recognise him from. <laughs> Thanks for coming in. Uh... <laughs> it was very local BBC radio that. It was. Well, this I... is like a level below that, isn't it? Which is just... <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. Having done all of the BBC radios, I can tell you this is a step above ninety-five percent of them. Oh, fucking awesome! Do you know, the it was actually two years ago yesterday. You know when I won that that award. The Dave's Best Joke of the Fringe thing, right? They put you in a box. So in BBC Radio Scotland, right? Yeah. There's a, a room about the size of that coffee table, right? And it's just a little machine with headphones. And they put me in there. It's seven o'clock in the morning. And we're like, right, so uh, you're going to speak to every radio station from the BBC in the UK. And I was like, what? So then... <laughs> It'll just like start playing like Mr. Brightside or something. Then it'll go, right, that was The Killers with Mr. Brightside. We're back here on Radio Sheffield. My name's blah, blah, blah. And we've got Adam Rowe. Adam, can you tell us what's this joke you've won an award with, mate? And you tell the joke. Then they don't laugh. (laughs) And then they go, right, cool. So thanks, Adam. And then there's about a five second gap. And then it goes, and now we're on Radio Nottingham. It's me, Toby. And that was The Killers, Mr. Brightside. (laughs) You have to do that same joke to every different radio station That's they've all got the exact same fucking banter oh, it's so and, and, and by the end of all of it you just want to go won't you cunts just pick one of the national bbc radios just do one interview and then send two them. one just pick one hello this is the bbc from where you fucking live <laughs> with place names you recognize here's the weather from shitville it's the bane of my fucking existence I've, and I've, I've finally i'm now at a stage of my career where i've told my agent i'm like no local bbc anywhere no lo- don't care what local bbc is unless it's unless it's radio five or one i'm not fucking ah, big dog. <laughs> <laughs> i'm not big doing dog. Any- oh no because it is it, 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 it's no fucking viewership the early years of your career we've got to go and fucking bbc radio leicester and talk to 45 minutes to some cunt who googled your name six minutes ago <laughs> like, remember stuff from seven years ago in your fucking career and he sits there and then you go do the gig the next day you're like how many people listened to me on the radio yesterday and they go oh none of us and you go oh that's right i paid my publicist for nothing no because it's <laughs> 10 past three and they're at home washing the fucking dog like, hey, will you come and do this interview no because you're not gonna buy a ticket yeah, and also i don't <laughs> want cunts who listen to bbc <laughs> swindon in my fucking audience this is not my target fucking death why do i want to listen to why do i why would i want to perform live stand-up comedy to any fucking cunt that chooses to listen to radio in the house <laughs> Tune into the day. Radio's for a car fucking home. That is it. If you listen to radio outside that hours, you're a fucking loser and I don't want you in my audience. That's why I'm glad to be on this podcast. Is Publis just going to ring him tonight? Like, I've uh, got your, uh, an interview at two o'clock in the morning. <laughs> Apparently, you're okay with that. You know, you could end these forever by just doing exactly what you did <laughs> on there. No, no, this no, is this is, radio. I'm really hoping that clip goes viral. <laughs> just so, like, you guys clip that down. That goes goes out next to my agents like can you do watch the clip and then just do literally <laughs> at it at every bbc fucking a to z shit down oh. of that it's just right. that there's you get you, you've got like three or four types of uh radio interviewers that are employed by the bbc you've got a uh, old man who nobody has the balls to fire like oh, he's just yeah. he's just been there for 70 been years there for ages and they're just like he's gonna die next year so this if <laughs> yeah. we fired him now it'd kill all of his opinions are wrong yeah. he's but- touched a few women yeah but they was never charges <laughs> so, so, so right. then you've got uh then you've got incredibly sexist man who thinks he's the funniest man in the world and his long-suffering co-host <laughs> Yeah. So uh, Jim actually thinks he's a little bit of a comedian. Well, that's the thing. I was in a taxi. You're like, oh, get me off the uh, no. fucking air. Resents and you for being the comedian. Oh, oh comedian uh, is it? Uh, I tell you, I used to make my friends laugh a lot back in the fucking day before <laughs> my wife left me with all my joy. Oh, man. Is there any interview you like? Is there any, like... What? Uh, yeah, I mean, this sort of shit. Stuff where it's actual conversation. Because what happens is, and I, this happens a fucking lot, is it, and I get so annoyed in those studio things where you, it's just you sat down in one room, just going through the same questions over and over and over again. And what it's got to the point where I get bored and I just start saying things that I know shouldn't make it to air, but they don't have the balls to cut it off. Jared Christmas is one of my favorite, uh, great comic, uh, did one of my favorite, favorite ever things I've ever seen on the radio, and I hope he still does it. 
It's my first time doing Radio 1, right? Uh -huh. I was like 18, 19. It was, I was doing like literally a two minute interview during the Fringe, right? And I thought it was the biggest thing in the world. I thought it was my big break. Jared Christmas is there <laughs> and he's been in the business so he knows it's fuck all and it doesn't matter. And he goes, I'm, I'm going to say cunt on the radio. And I was like, Jared, please don't say cunt on the radio. This is like my first ever big radio. <laughs> Please don't say cunt on the radio. My grand's listening to this because I'm about to be on the radio. Can you not say cunt on the radio? He's like, I'm going to say cunt on the radio. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say cunt on the radio seven times. And I was like, Jared, please don't say cunt on the radio. Please don't. Right? Because he's Kiwi. So they go, the interview be like, Were you on together? Or was yes, it you I'm after? Just, yeah. All right, okay. So me, him sat beside each other and they go, uh, and I'm so nervous because he's going to say cunt on the radio and I'm not going to be on the radio. So they give them out to me. I fly through whatever I'm about to say. And they go, Jared, how are you enjoying the festival? Because he's Kiwi, he's like, I, I can't believe we're only two weeks in. I can't believe how amazing the audience has been. I can't believe how well it's been selling. I can't believe how tired I And I swear, can't, 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 can't. And I'm fucking dying there and laughing, just watching him get away with this. Oh. Hi. Well, that's what they talk about on the American podcast, don't they? The, the futility and the absolute nightmare that is the local TV stations, the breakfast shows that the comedy clubs put you on. Done them. Oh my God. And there was a guy that shut one down forever. Sam Morell. Yeah. When did you think you were funny? I think when my uncle was touching me. <laughs> <laughs> Have you seen that video? Absolutely. <laughs> I love Sam he, he gets asked something like, uh, oh, what, what do you get, get being funny in your family? And he's like, yeah, well, my uncle fucked me and like, he was really funny. So I thought it was like a Spider-Man situation. Yeah! <laughs> <laughs> and then it's just her just going. <laughs> and then and next we got Steve with the weather <laughs> and good morning Hartford in the morning. <laughs> don't, don't have comedians anymore but again they don't buy tickets why are they on there I, so, well so much of what you actually I mean this is good this is the only real type of fucking interview where it's going into people that would go I'm actually going to buy tickets to the show you suddenly realise everything that you write for the fucking guardian and every interview you do most I it's wow. just it's not for, it's not for the audience it's for everyone else in your industry it's yeah right so that's what, exactly what I've never heard it put so succinctly. It's for everyone in the industry. Yeah, going, hey, this is where I am within the industry. Literally, nobody outside of this gives a wet, hot shit. Yeah, oh. nobody. None of none of my audience have ever given a fucking shit about any interview I've done in the Guardian, in the Telegraph, any review I've ever got. I guarantee no audience member I've ever has ever given a fucking shit. I've never liked Daniel Sloss, but I read something really witty in the <laughs> Guardian, and I've been a big fan ever since. Yeah, yeah, and ever since then, I don't enjoy, don't mind the fact that he says cunt all the Where fuck. Do you so, think? Can I ask you a question? Where do you think your audience comes from? Because you've built it mainly from live, which, like, to a lot of people, seems like the long route, done it? Aye, but you've done it quite fucking quickly. Yeah, well, I mean, <laughs> but that's, yeah. It I just, know you've had a lot of TV, and very recently, if, like the two specials on Netflix and HBO. But like, it's not like you were putting hours and hours of stuff on social media because you popped and were sort and before that was even a fucking thing, anyway. Yeah, I mean, I've, I've, I've had a fair few good breaks in my uh, career and then also just took advantage of them and actually, you know, yeah. nailed them. And Worked. Like, yeah, Smashed it. Yeah, like, well, look, this is, uh, it would be a wonderful world if all of comedy was a meritocracy, and I think sometimes it is, but there's a lot of time we know comedians who are funnier than us who just will not ever be. Who? Who? Come on. Martin who? Nelson. <laughs> <laughs> Martin Nelson's always Okay, well, name another one. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, uh, fuck him. <laughs> yeah, no, I know. I also agree with that. <laughs> I also firmly agree with that. Um, but also working enough to when you get the next opportunity, because like to be like, all right, you've got an opportunity to smash this. Right, I'll do my best six minutes, and then they're like, great. Do you want to do it again in two months? We're like, oh, I don't have any more stuff. Like you, you keep got, hitting it and keep right. working. Yeah, well, I mean, my thing was always the it's the standard. It's the George Carlin rules that became the Louis C.K. rules that became the Bill Burr rules, which is you write a new hour every year, and that's the rule you take off a layer of yourself you reveal it to the audience and then you'd bend it and then the, and that's it and it's just turnover of material is the only like and and it's a good way of keeping an audience because if you do a new hour every year they go fuck i want to see what he thinks of this year or go what's his opinion on this and so on and so and you build a relationship with your audiences because i don't think like anything overnight success hasn't really existed in the uk since like fucking Oh, I mean, Kevin Bridges on uh, McIntyre's Roadshow was the yeah, last he, thing I remember. Yeah, he popped, didn't he? Yeah, oh. there was a few on McIntyre's Roadshow. Melikin, Manford, Bishop, uh, Bridges. There was the class of the first season that 2008, went. 2006, around there. Yeah, Kevin Bridges was doing, I think he was doing like a 50-seater in uh, the Fringe. 
And that sold out with it, like after McIntyre's Roadshow had gone, it sold out in like thirty fucking minutes. And then he added in like three Pleasant's Grand ones and like all in the, and fucking the, June as well. Aye. Yeah, I've sold out my <laughs> Edinburgh run. When did you sell it out? Four months before Edinburgh. Aye. Do you think maybe we should have got a bigger fucking venue? <laughs> Any chance? Second week of August, I'm like, hey, Saturday's looking good. There's twelve fucking already. <laughs> three fours as well, so there's going to be energy. <laughs> I've still got flyers booked. They're but they're actually flying for next year. <laughs> <laughs> it's really well organised. <laughs> oh, yeah! It's uh, it's amazing to see those guys who haven't haven't earned it, haven't earned their spurs, and and they get the opportunities because you you, you were talking a lot about of a meritocracy. Walcott, isn't there? There's but, a lot of Theo Walcott. But you can go so who far. Get that thing first, and then they go away, and you're the exact opposite of yeah. that. But you can yeah. go so far, you will get found out. You can get given opportunities that you aren't deserving of yeah. and you can fucking ride that fluky wave for a bit. But if you haven't turned up, like you've done, what, nine hours? At the uh, yeah, yeah, 10 hours, yeah. Oh, sorry, 10. <laughs> 10. Sorry, I'm so sorry. <laughs> sorry. Didn't want to make you look like a lazy bastard by <laughs> no, saying no, that. And, and, and the fact it was in double digits made me look that way. <laughs> yeah, <so>. yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. But I mean, if you haven't done the fucking work, those opportunities, it, eventually you're going to be in a big in a big stage looking like a bell end. I and like, it's yeah, I mean, and you do see it happen a lot, which is you know comedians go on and they do the, their best ten minutes of material that they've got on whatever TV spot it is, and then they do their second best five minutes after that, and then they're like, "Can you do another ten? And they're like, "Nope." Yeah, because I don't they're, have. From the, they're from the circuit. See, I started out twenty eighteen years ago. You guys started out when the circuit mentality had changed mm. and there was still some dinosaurs going, but I wrote a good set in 1994. <laughs> it's paid off half my house. <laughs> Why would I change it? <laughs> like you guys are like, yeah, of course you write new stuff, why wouldn't you? But I've got like, and that's what I've done and tried to do, but I've still got mates who started when I started, who sort of like their coding was the old school way of like, it's a good 25. I, it's why not would I drop for anything? the audience for me. Like, to me, though, it's for me. Mm. I get fucking bored of saying the same shit after six months. Like, the last sort six of... Six months is not like that. Is Gen not a lot. I did, I, yeah, I mean, I did... I, I absolutely get where you're coming from. I did the same show fucking 300 times, and it fucking drives you insane. Like, yeah. It's you getting bored. But imagine I, still doing that in seven years' time, and... We've just had the Olympics in London. <laughs> Mate, that's our go to really. rhythm. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, There's I, been oh, by another the way. Olympics and a cancelled Olympics yeah. since then. And I know exactly who you're talking about. <laughs> <laughs> I think we've done very well not to name them. The second you said, I'm like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> this, is, this is our new favourite bit of sport. Waiting, because gigs are starting up again. Waiting to see the comics be like, tell you what, the uh, coronavirus, the pandemic, absolutely brutal. I mean, it would have cancelled the Olympics in London. <laughs> uh, I'll tell you what, you look back now because of the coronavirus and the pandemic and COVID-19 and think, Brexit, really? Brexit doesn't look any, you know, like, as important. Anyway, here's my Brexit bit. Like, whoop. Uh, We've decided we're going to be back at the gigs going, God, <laughs> for any of that <laughs> shit housery. We're going to take, see that uh, megaphone up there, take yeah. that to gigs with us every time someone tries to crowbar in yeah, an old just bit. Just wedge it in via If you're going to do an old bit, be honest about it and just go, written on you guys, so <laughs> Brexit is still funny. Here's a joke I wrote that was relevant in 2020, <laughs> and it's not yet, and I haven't written any new material since then because I've been sad. <laughs> so... <laughs> I've just got still that stuff. I've not updated the new shit yet. Mate, I worked, I worked recently with a convert who went, literally just, you know, when you see someone talking and, and he went, so, what do you think of the coronavirus? <laughs> <laughs> and they were like, yeah, not good. You're like, no shit. And because it, because it wasn't a funny question, apart from if you're a comic, I'm the only bell end laughing, which makes everyone go, why is he laughing? You're like, because it's the worst convert question I've ever heard. Have you, what's your shutdown what's, creativity yeah. like? Have you just locked it down, turned your head off? Or uh, you... Oh, creativity wise, absolutely turned it off. Uh, I took it as, like I finished my tour last year in December. It'd been like an 18 month tour properly around the world. So I was just, I was knackered, sad and fucking exhausted, right? Uh, and I was like, I can't wait for some fucking time off next year. I was going to have booked time off between June, oh no, it was yeah, May, June, July, right? I was going to tour. That would have been this year. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Plan was go to America, do New York, build up a show there, go to Australia, work it up there, come back, three months off, go into the fringe, 
Bosh, bosh, bosh. That. Uh, and it's then, the dream. It's the international dream there for every comedian. <laughs> like, yeah, I'll just I'll go over these amazing places and do comedy in amazing places, <laughs> then come home and do it at the Fringe. I'm, yeah. co- I'm um, conscious now, right, that like quite a lot of comics listen to this podcast yeah. or watch it. And the amount of comics who are going to listen to you describe what would be an absolute dream year to them yeah. as bish bash bosh. Yeah. <laughs> hey, and if, and if New York, and uh, stroll over to Australia, fuck around there, three months having a wank, then might just turn up and do a 400 season in Edinburgh every day, you know, yeah. and then then I might go on tour. And can I just say, I couldn't have done it without BBC Swindon. <laughs> <laughs> Those the years of support that they gave. Uh, let's hand over to Carol with her. Uh, <laughs> But you didn't get to do any of it, and you've done driving gigs in Falkirk. Yeah, yes. yeah, no, because I was. It turns out I'm I'm real shit at time off. It was really. I thought I was good at it because what I'm really good at doing is getting incredibly stoned and lying down on a beanbag in front of a computer or an <laughs> Xbox and just playing games for it. And I'm like, oh, this is relaxing. But the entire time, my brain's going. You're not doing anything, <laughs> and that is so against the fucking grain. And uh, there was about two months where I just high anxiety. Didn't know why I felt fucking useless. And my girlfriend's been working from home, and she's been the breadwinner. And fucking the deep rooted toxic masculinity in me could not handle that for the <laughs> longest time. Just because, even though you know, it's, it's relationships with you fucking together, and 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 you know, I've always been like, you know, I don't mind. You know, I'm against those traditional fucking roles. Yeah. As long as I'm earning more. Ah, like, it's the yes, weirdest yeah. thing. Like, and I thought, I was God, like, I'm a fuck me, I'm progressive. And all it took was a month and a half of smoking weed just being like, God, you're fucking pointless. <laughs> Look at her through there doing everything that needs to keep this together <laughs> while you sit on a couch just doing fucking nothing. So, is this, is this, what, is this where Twitch started for everyone? Like, I'm on a beanbag. <laughs> stop bag, the I'm monologue. Games. Can I just double check? Are we getting enough of his? We are now, sorry, yeah, yeah. Sorry, right. sorry. He's, he's, a, he's a very theatrical. He's, he's like, he's a, he's I've like never me. seen a sitter that's got more. <laughs> Like, That's I was just thinking maybe we should move the table a bit closer. Is that something we should do or not? Can, I can the, just, the I can, can break just, closer. Yeah, I can just be, I can just be more professional. <laughs> I could just, it's well within my possibility. But I do, you I just look like a look. man who's just driven down from Scotland and then is that to sit down again? You're like, oh God, anyone just, I love, do you want jogging? Anyone? <laughs> Did you start a Twitch? Have you got a Twitch? I've, I can't, I don't have... I have the worst internet connection in the entire of the UK. Uh, no, 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 I do. To what? The, I have the worst internet connection in the whole of the UK. My up, my download speed is uh, two megabits uh, and my upload is 0.1. Okay. What? Yeah. Uh, to the point, uh, and it's been the ultimate feeling of gap, and it's just my street. It's just my one street in Edinburgh. Uh, it's just outside uh, the fucking fiber optic cables, whatever it is. It's been the ultimate feeling of capitalism through. Like I've approached Virgin Media and I've went, I will give you this amount of money to dig up the road outside of my house and put the internet into it. And and then everyone on the street will pay for the internet and you'll have all this money Shame. and all these. And they were like- Champion slash, you did it. I, and they were like, no. And I'm like, what do you what do you mean no? Because you know Edinburgh's pretty, that's why. My, can't just my dig dad it can't get fair to me. You know, like- oh, no, VT, none, no internet company in the UK will deliver to this You're like a Sky. Uh, no, oh no, yeah, no, no, I, Sky Internet, but just the cabling of where I am is the maximum speed you can get is five meg. Sky Internet is still through the phone line though, isn't it? Yeah. Is it? Yeah, yeah. through the sky? No. No, no, but I can see why you think it was. <laughs> I get why I love it. Like, I was like, <laughs> no, but I get, yeah, but it's, it's fucking annoying, isn't it? We, that's like time travel via broadband speed, isn't it? It's, it's, there's, just, it's one of the most frustrating things in the world. Do you want to download a film? Yeah, for tomorrow. Yeah, oh yeah, no, we do. We have to download on Sky. We have to do- if we want to download a movie to watch, we have to download it in standard definition because if we want to watch an eighty movie, we have to download it today for tomorrow. It's just the worst, and it's well, it's not the worst. I mean, I've got a I've got a nice house and a garden, but it just doesn't suit the internet connection. Yes, yeah. sh- are you still in the same house that I've been to? Have you moved? No, home? no, things have gone well since then. That was still a nice house, though. Thanks. That was a nice house already. <laughs> uh, no, it was. It was. It, it was. It was a nice house for. Uh, it was a nice house in the sense that I was a. I was a fucking mid twenties moron. It was just a party house, right? That's all it was. Yeah. It was a place where I invited all of my friends around and we drank and did drugs. And uh, yeah. now I'm slightly. I mean, there's slightly more of an adult 
or I'm just putting on the clothes that adults wear doing the voice in the hopes that one day right. I trick myself into... And Kai uh, doesn't live with you anymore as well. Oh, God, I hope not. If he has, I've lost him. <laughs> 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 no, we decided, like, because he literally got married. Like, he got married on September the 10th. My birthday is on September the 11th. And then September the 14th, we went on an 18-month tour. So his wife was like, he's mine. And I was like, you are very much mistaken. <laughs> Allow me to tell us. you all the ways in which that is not the case. For those who don't know who we're talking about, we're talking about the, the Geordie legend. He is Geordie, isn't he? Yeah, but he's not a legend. No, he's so not. He God, he's not proper Geordie, he though. He saved he's like- a child's life. <laughs> he's, yeah, they did. They, <laughs> they, they punched a kid with cancer back to life. You remember that? Yeah. Oh, right. Yeah. I, I, I honestly thought I'd missed a story, and I was like, wow, I didn't know you could do that with cancer. There's a kid down a well, fucking, and Kai. Yeah. Fucking, yeah. I'll take the tumour and just fucking whack yeah. him really hard. <laughs> right. I just fucking popped everywhere. <laughs> I just was- fucking twatted cancer. <laughs> That's Blythe. That's, that's medicine in Blythe for you. Yeah, that's that's what the jury version of fighting cancer is. <laughs> it's just going around and knocking out anyone with cancer. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> Why cancer. didn't you fight at that event, the boxing night that we're talking about? Oh. Our listeners, are, we spoke about it before, so they'll know. I was in New, I was in New York. Oh. Uh, I was I was I was away, and uh, I was yeah. So I was on tour. I absolutely would have. I would, would you have, have fought Kai or would you have because no. he fought Gav no no Kai punches cancer I've seen Kai in I would never anyone that fights Kai is an idiot I have <laughs> toured I've been friends with Kai for close to 10 years now I've seen him in multiple fights I've never seen him come close to fucking losing he's one of the most terrifying humans I would never under any circumstance fight him Proper what? smile and assassin as well. Like the uh, nicest, happiest guy in the well, world. But that's that's why it's different. I'd always describe Kai. Kai. Kai's like a scummy Batman, right? He He's never knocked out anyone who didn't deserve to be knocked out. But he does nominate himself <laughs> to be the one to knock these cunts out. <laughs> it's a very like, it's Judge Judy, but Judge Dredd. He's just like, you're a cunt. You need to know you're a cunt. I'll, t- I'll teach it. I'll be... The police aren't going to do it because what you've done is not a crime, but to me it is. There was one yeah. time we were doing a, a Leicester... I think we were doing Leicester. And we're, I, my turn to fucking drive on tour. So st- start to the traffic lights. He's there. And the light turns fucking amber. And I didn't move off the millisecond that the car, the, the light turned amber. So the guy behind me honks his fucking horn. Yeah. yeah, you know what it's like. So I've just fucking, I rolled down the window. There's your dinner. There's one for your wife. Enjoy the rest. <laughs> like, just not thinking any about it. And I, cause I'm still talking to Kai. I look in the wind view mirror and the guy is getting out of his car. And this, to me, a man who's never in a fight, is a nightmare. I'm about to suffer the consequences of my own actions. I'm not, I'm not safe inside of a vehicle. And I thought I was. I, was, I turned around to Kai to tell him what's about to happen. And the door is open and his watch is just fucking spinning in there like in the Uluru. Oh, Kai so takes his watch cool. off before a fight because he's broken so many watches punching people. I didn't <laughs> so, want to lose another Casio. <laughs> Foot and 12 pound every time. Yeah. Fucking, what will I have for a swimming bath? It vibrates whenever we've got two minutes left of me set. What, what time did you knock him out? At 13.37? Exactly. So, like, literally, we're just in the fucking car. The guy gets out of his car. Kai gets out and just goes, get back in your car before I fucking steal it. And I watched... <laughs> I watched for five seconds this man just outside his car, just look at Kai, <laughs> reassess the source, it's like the situation, and just get back in his car, put the seat back yeah. out. And I don't know what he said to his wife, but it was something. <laughs> just him just being like, You're not going to do anything, Roger. <laughs> Shut up, Maureen. <laughs> also, if you're thinking, God, this guy must be massive, he's fucking not. He looks like an otter with a heroin problem. Yeah. <laughs> But he's one of them, you know when you watch the UFC and they're a bit bandy, you're like, you don't look like, oh no, you're good. (laughs) Fucking spinning kicks and everything. He was just, because he was, because he grew up in Blythe, he just had the shit kick. Because he grew up in Blythe with like Coke lens glasses, ginger hair and shite teeth. He's had the shit kicked out of him his his entire life. So he's not scared of it. And it's kind of like a superpower in itself. (laughs) Because I'm terrified of having the shit kicked out of me, whereas he knows what it's like and he knows he can survive. He's good at it. Did I, at the first time I ever saw him gig, I was comparing Beat the Frog, uh, and he'd been watching too much black American <laughs> comedy, and he was from 
blithe and looked like a otter who'd had heroin. And he walked up and he did a bit of material that is one of my all-time favourite failed bits of stand-up material that beat the frog that I loved, didn't really work. But he was talking about, he was like, you know, it's such a weird visual with Kai who's so white and doing the ver- the the rhythm and the almost the, the 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 timing of black American comedy with his accent. He's like, I'm so good at eating pussy, me. I'm fucking amazing at eating pussy. And the crowd are like, what? And then he went, I'm like fucking the goat at eating pussy. I'm like the Tiger Woods of eating pussy. <laughs> right. And I was howling at the side and they weren't really laughing. And he did okay. I think he got gonged off, but he, he held all right. Oh, but it, he just, I saw him quickly come back and work it out. Yeah. But for the whole night, I went back on and just kept referencing random golfers and went, that's interesting. I am the Miguel Anguel Jimenez of eating pussy. So that's I am interesting. A, I, just I am doing the it. Sergio Garcia of fisting. <laughs> <laughs> I absolutely don't. I'm the fucking Tiger Woods of eating pussy. <laughs> bet you are. Uh, I bet you are. There's no one in the country who is less likely to get away with that routine. <laughs> was. Also, I'm pretty sure. I'm pretty sure Tiger Woods is the Tiger Woods of eating pussy. <laughs> <laughs> like a man who just ate all of the pussy all of the time. Yeah, oh, say what you God. want about Tiger Woods. He's <laughs> I can do both. <laughs> he can golf. Who, who would English. you have fought? Um, oh, fucking Jack Carroll. <laughs> <laughs> I'd water in my mouth. Oh, you can't do jokes about disabled kids when I've got water in my mouth. I've told Jack Hell about myself as well. God, and, then, and, 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 hey, and I'll call him out on camera. Jack, if you want to fucking go. <laughs> oh, God. I don't oh, know who Don't that. get that on BBC Radio Swindon, do you? Oh, uh, <laughs> for those that don't know, Jack is a very funny comedian with cerebral palsy. <laughs> very funny comedian with cerebral palsy. <laughs> Regularly comes up to uh, watch the UFC with uh, me and... They, yeah. Oh. It, wasn't there a famous, sorry, I've interrupted you, but wasn't there a big night that everyone, you went up, didn't you? There was a few, yeah. So, no, it was Jordan the Fringe. So there was the, the two that I remember at yours. Conor McGregor Diaz. Uh, McGregor Diaz. Diaz and McGregor Mayweather. Mayweather, which you came up for, didn't you? And Ian Sterling thought he was going to lose a lot of money. Aye, because he, he put, bet cause, heavily on Mayweather because he was like, it's obviously going to be him. So I'll just bet like thousands and I'll just get the extra like, I think he like it was like one to seven or something. So he's like, I'll put seven grand on, Aye. and I'll just win a grand. And then the first three rounds, McGregor landed a few punches, and he's like, "Go fuck a seven grand on this." Yeah, that's not good odds, is it? No, they were amazing nights then, though. Oh, they were fucking brilliant back when Conor McGregor was still a hero. <laughs> Do you not yeah. like him anymore? There's too many. Too many things happened. Aye, uh, there's too many things that have shown me his uh, his, what. I just I'm agreeing massively. Oh yeah, there's yeah. just uh, man, yeah. man. Look, he was, he was the greatest fight of all time when I got, I got to fucking me. I set up the McGregor Mayweather fight, um, so I'm obviously and I can prove that by the oh, way. Oh, tell us about that then. Yeah, go on. So uh, if you so Conor McGregor fighting uh, Floyd Mayweather, right? Uh, the first time, uh, if you there's an interview with Floyd Mayweather when he was asked when he became aware and when he wanted to fight Conor McGregor, and he says without a doubt it was when Co- uh, Conor McGregor called him out on Conan. And uh, Connor went on Conan uh, just because like, I could be up anyone, I could be up Floyd Mayweather. Floyd Mayweather heard that, went money fight, we're doing it. That was the day that was decided. That day he was on Conan was because of me. <laughs> it was because if, when I did my first Conan spot like eight years ago, uh, the booker of the show, a guy called JP Buck, is a good friend. We've been friends ever since. When Conor McGregor started a big, as a big UFC fan, I was like, you've got to watch this guy. He's the funniest. He's the best. He just kicks the shit out of cunts left, right and center. He predicts it. I love him. And so me and JP would watch all the fucking fights together, all the interviews together. Whenever I was over, they would watch him. And then one day he's like, oh, Conor wants to, this was before the Aldo fight got cancelled and it was going to the um, Mendes fight. Just before that. Good knowledge. Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, they went. Aldo just cancelled, and Connor was meant to be going on Conan. Oh, they, they, they UFC asked to go on Conan to promote the fight, and JP was like, "Do you think Connor would be good on Conan?" <gasps> and I was like, "Absolutely, yeah, he absolutely would. Uh, I think he'd be brilliant. I think I've seen all his interviews. He's funny. He was booked from that. I have a voicemail on my phone from Conor McGregor thanking me 
for getting him on the Conan O'Brien show, Holy which is the shit. one where he called out Floyd Mayweather, which is the one where Floyd Mayweather agreed to the fight. I set up the Can fight. I give him a round of applause? You can. I no, thought I'm that gonna was going to be bullshit. Uh, I set up uh, Tyson Lewis. <laughs> <laughs> I did. So I was on the- Talk us through it, I did. <laughs> <There> we go. <laughs> Let I me just on- get the bullshit <laughs> bell ready. <laughs> <laughs> on you go. <laughs> Let's see. No, he's laughing to give himself thinking time. This is part fake laughing. He's now thinking he's making up the lie. This is the bullshit bell, Daniel. No, we was, use it. I was on the school playground. <laughs> it's phenomenal stuff. <laughs> and I was talking to me mates, and I was like, Tyson would smash Lewis's head in defo. And at that time, Lennox Lewis's best mate. Walk past the school playground <laughs> on the Cindy Pat <laughs> on the phone to Lennox Lewis and Lennox Lewis was like, "Hang on, what the fuck did that kid just say there?" And then, yeah. and then they had a fight. Yeah, okay, good. <laughs> there you go. Thank you. <laughs> Very satisfying to let him go. Wow, what's oh. the Conan like? What is it? Eight years ago. So yeah. what are you in? That you're like three, four years in at that point. Even that? No, no. I was first time I did. Uh, I've been going for six. How old are you now? Uh, I turned 30 in a couple of weeks. Okay, cool. But no. You've been going for... 13, I've, been going for I've been going for 13, not close to 14 years, yeah. Oh, gee, gee. So you uh, were 16? Yeah, 16, probably. Heavy, that. Uh, I, I mean, don't get me wrong, I wasn't fucking... I wasn't good, but, you know, get out of the way. Yeah, but you don't need to be good, do you? You just need to be getting better. Ah, uh, you just need to. I mean, it's a, the one of, everyone goes, what's the one advice you give to a comedian? Just go, get the fuck on stage and just do that for as long as possible until you're no longer, one, terrified of being up there, or two, you don't care that you're scared of being up there, or three, you know, you resent them enough to make them laugh. Oh, I thought you, <laughs> I thought you were on Conan, like, faster in your career path than that. Oh. So six years now you just seem like a bad. loser. <laughs> oh, God, I mean, I did Conan after three. <laughs> oh, no, yeah, it was six a, 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 years five, 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 to get on Conan. <laughs> fucking six years. Yeah, How, who, where did you get booked for it? Did you do a gig in Hull and they were like, the Conan people are in? <laughs> <laughs> we keep it's, having to comp them. Yeah, he actually he has a second home in Hull. He was <laughs> yeah, just yeah. In, he was in the crowd. It's uh, really unusual. Usually, you spend a lot of time at, at gigs in Lincoln, but they've really uh, expanded the net. Uh, the the French. Uh, one yeah. of the yeah the guy uh, the books it uh, came over to the French and God I miss the French. What? He's a good guy, JP. He, he is. He is, and he knows. He's his a good pint. He's a good like late drinker as well. He's, he's always a, there at those late bars till like five o'clock in the morning. He's also something that you don't really get much of in the UK, which is somebody who books comedy for a show who regularly attends comedy clubs. JP JP Bucket Books Gordon will go into comedy clubs every single week. He watches comedy. All the fucking time. It's his favourite thing in the world. That's why he does it. Knows comics. Knows, knows comics, right? And uh, to do Conan is great because JP will sit there and go, this joke will not work on that fucking show because I know that show and this won't work on it. So don't do that joke. He knows shit. Whereas over here, you just get people, BBC people being like, look, we know you've got an audience, but we feel that your audience would like if you wore a tiara. <laughs> and we know you've never done it before, but we're the BBC and we've got loads of black books. We've done things. Anyway, so, and then they just, you know, just. <laughs> How, just so there was no fiddling. They sort of, bit of advice. J- JP was just, he was like, would you like to do the show? Send me through what you'd like as a fucking set. I sent through what I uh, sent through. I sent through, a, specifically in the set, a joke that I always put in all my sets because I know they're going to cut the joke out of the show. Just make every person who has to edit your set, make them feel like they did their job by putting in a joke that there's no way it's going to make to television. And then they <laughs> oh, go, oh, I'll take this one out. I've got a question. Yeah. I've got a question, man. Yeah. What's the joke? Uh, <laughs> they, they let me do it. It went, it went out on Conan. It was my uh-huh. uh, my mum's my sister is has a very healthy outlook to contraception. Uh, well, no, my mum has a very healthy outlook to contraception, which is good because her sister is anti-abortion, which is a cruel nickname, but she's had five. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, just, it's a joke that I always put in every single set because I knew the second abortion's mentioned, it'll get cut out and then they'll leave the rest of the set alone. <laughs> and when Conan it, are like, this is good. <laughs> yeah. Right? Man, on the set, like you could see me laugh. Like the worst thing comedians do when they laugh at their own jokes. I did it on Conan because I could not believe that they let me tell an abortion joke at 7 p.m. on American television. Amazing. Because <laughs> they fucking hate abortions over there. <laughs> 
Yeah, but well, it's it's filmed in LA and yeah, not yeah. like, you know, Birmingham, Alabama. Yeah, it's not <laughs> Conan on the road. <laughs> <laughs> Don't have as many abortion jokes. <laughs> oh, wow. Oh, God. You okay? Do you need yeah. a, should we have a little breather? Probably. It I've, feels like it. Because we both I've laughed went, a lot. <sighs> we, we all took a breath, didn't we? <sighs> um, yeah, whack a sponsor in here. And then we'll be back in a sec. What's happening, guys? Today's sponsor is Beer52.com. They are the UK's number one craft beer discovery club. And they've teamed up with us to give our listeners a free case of beer. That means you get eight free beers, an award-winning beer magazine, and a tasty snack as your first free order. And it's free. You pay nothing. You just pay the £5.95 postage and packaging. You'll then be a member of their Craft Beer Discovery Club and they send you a different theme of beers every month. Past themes have been the beers of Belgium, the beers of Korea, California, all over the world. Every month, a new theme and they're always a belter. You'll find craft beers that you'll never find on your own and also you can pause your membership at any time. So do us a favour, support the podcast, support our sponsors, go to beer52.com slash word. That's B-E-E-R 52.com slash W-O-R-D. Every time you sign up, we get a little bit of money, so you get your free beers. There's a little bit of money to support the podcast. It's win-win. I'm a member. I love it. Let's get back to the podcast. We're we'll going to get some beers. Pause it here. Go and get some beers. Beer 52. So we, right. sort of, we sort of touched on this in the first bit, but Dan's had a bit of a question coming from one of our listeners that would be good to get your opinion on. Yeah, we ca- I nearly didn't do it because I thought we'd sort of touched on it and we mentioned Mark Nelson. Nunt! And um, <laughs> Peter Ronnie Williams, who gives us a load of questions, says, Hi, Lids. Would love to know which comedians you two would like to see have a big comedy special or DVD and go on to be massive like Bishop, McIntyre, Bridges. Uh, for me, it would be Mick Ferry. I think he's amazing and would be fantastic on a special. Also, just to add on, you can't pick each other, you big nonces. Well, then I'm not playing. <laughs> I can't pick myself. I don't want to know. <laughs> oh, I thought that was going to be. I thought it was going to be really nice. You could be like, well, I'm not playing because I obviously want to pick Dan. But you're like, no, if I can't, <laughs> if I can't pick myself, I then fuck it. It's, it's like trying to give yourself a blowjob. And I'm like, oh god, I mean, you're great. So Mick, who Mick Ferry was on that. Sorry, go on. But Mick Ferry was on that McIntyre we mentioned, wasn't he? The one yeah, that yeah. wrote. Mick's fucking brilliant. Glenn, Glenn Wool. Wool. He's yeah, coming on in a few weeks. Glenn. Oh, Glenn's he, amazing. He's two guests away, I think. Yeah. Yeah. He's dead, dead, dead good. He's really good. Uh, I know she's done a bit of TV, but I, I, I think Zoe Lyons is fucking excellent in now. Yeah. Like in a live fucking environment. Uh, They're three big dogs, aren't they? They're three of the big circuit dogs. Fairy, wool, lions. If you saw a bill like that, you'd be like, yeah, fuck if that it, was a big galley, yeah. then you're like, oh, right. shit. Right, probably not do that new bit and that fucking <laughs> shit that I thought of on the M6. Yeah, Aye. that's a top-end store bill. That's one of the best store bills you'll see. All right, and one where, yeah, one where you, we would be doing the, the pussy spot and still terribly nervous. <laughs> <laughs> Sean McLaughlin is a guy that gets a lot of love on here. I'd love it if he got like, I think his route would probably be someone giving him like a sitcom where he gets to write it properly. You know, like... It's not going to happen, though, is it? They uh, just don't do that anymore. So you're brilliant at writing comedy. Do you want to write some comedy? What yeah. The, no, well, no, you're we, brilliant at writing comedy, but Dave yeah. fancies to go as well, so no, you listen to him. Do you mind if we just fucking interfere with the entire process that has made you incredible? We know you're very successful at the moment, but we'd like to use it and then also disrupt it at the same as time. As the BBC, we, we think that your audience that <laughs> we know you would like you to do... <laughs> Can you bring them to us, but doing our thing? Yeah. I've, I've got no, want your I've, audience to become our audience. Audience, but not by doing things you do because we don't like those things. We want you to do things our way so that your audience like the way we do things. Thank you very much. None of the effort. Thank you. And can you get to Swindon? <laughs> uh, you so mentioned you- Martin Nelson. Martin Nelson's a big one. I think Nelson's just... Big, well, Nelson and I started... When I started the Scottish circuit, he was like... The I put Nelson in my top five, I think. Uh, in the yeah, UK. that's very... Yeah. I we did I, a dream build, didn't we? Did I put him on? Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I've got Nelson in my top five, uh, I think. I, UK circuit comics. Like, you do not want to be closing the bill if he's had to go on in the middle for whatever reason. Yeah, do you know what I mean? Yeah, one of the ones we just go, I can't, do not want to fucking uh, follow that. Yeah, it's thumbing the shit down the bath routine. It's just fucking... <laughs> Isn't it? The, you, the, the best comics have all the punters laughing, all the other comics laughing, all the staff laughing, 
and the promoter. Like that is the there's, there's comics that can do one of those things. Everyone can, there's those comics and they stay like, for a pint. They oh. stay for a pint. The best comics are like, I'll have a quick pint before I get off, rather than no, it's fucking nine oh seven and I've got to beat the the road closures at nine fourteen. So pfft, oh, I don't yeah. like them. <laughs> he's great. He's Martin Elson is great for a pint. Yeah, because he's oh, yeah. just so sound, but he doesn't dominate you know he's just one of them and he like he's, he's also good fun yeah, you'll say something very very cutting that you don't even realize yeah, was cutting until the him. walk home yeah <laughs> you just hear that what a lovely time <laughs> <with Mark>. <laughs> 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 i can't believe you said that <laughs> i went to a hip-hop night with him in birmingham and he Great. he we got steaming and i was single and he wasn't and i was chasing this girl around who was <laughs> fucking rough and you know you're like i don't care i'm single i'm on my holes i'm in birmingham when in rome and he just um, just sort of witnessed the whole night happening for like yeah fucking quality yeah. Aye. fucking nightingale doing fucking hip hop is it well, that's a decent that's a not bad nelson impression that's a little bit fucking pedoey <laughs> <laughs> by the way <laughs> <laughs> making one nelson saying you pedoey is there anyone sort of newer sort of up and coming you think it'd be great if they got there um, yeah. oh, I, but don't we, say Gareth War because it'll make them too happy well I mean that gym it was, <laughs> was, was going to be it was going to be War <laughs> Gareth War uh, Laura Lex is really good I really like watching her show Laura's yeah. great yeah um, Elliot I saw Elliot St- I mean he's a friend but I saw Elliot Steele st- actual do an hour last year and it was very very good nah. which is so different to his other stuff yeah no. <laughs> <laughs> not, not for me on that one. Yeah. <laughs> What's he doing with his hair? We're talking about too many comics and uh, no one knows in the art. <laughs> All right, let's flip it around. Which famous comics do you want to see allegations come out of? Oh, here we <laughs> fucking go. Um... Well, well, I mean, the ones that we all know have done stuff. How about those ones? <laughs> <laughs> Is there another advert, Rick? <laughs> Jesus, damn. <Yeah. laughs> you know that big one that we all know, but we're not allowed to talk about that one, I reckon. Why aren't we allowed to talk about it? Uh, because whenever people try to... We hear that they get silenced and then we get scared and then it's also because... The libel laws are awful, and if you can't prove something, you can't say something, and people who have done evil things don't want even rumours to go around, so they'll sue and they'll harass, and you know, because the world is fucked, Adam. Yes, yeah, fair enough. He's got a really good career, your career's going places, and I've got a house. <laughs> <laughs> so let's just be careful. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But we, when we started the podcast and we were on like 800, 1,000, for those first few episodes, it was the Wild West, we were like, hey! and now all of a sudden you're like, yeah, better be careful, we're on the YouTube. Without and mentioning any a- names, I will tell this story. Um, the comic we're talking about, who is allegedly a bad person um, in, the, in a sexual way, there was a comic doing a show about him in Edinburgh and the bad place, the bad comics management team and PR got in touch with the comic doing the show and was like, stop doing that. So he spoke to a lawyer and the lawyer went, you actually can take it a couple of steps further than what you're already taking it. And it made the show more libelous, but not libelous enough to be actually libelous. Have you ever written a joke where you're like, I love this bit. You know, when you sometimes run it by a, a mate comedian, if you have to run it by a fucking lawyer, like I'm just going to check <laughs> with counsel. Yeah. Uh, Can I say it? I, I mean, yeah, but surely the fact that you're talking to us suggests that maybe <laughs> just stick to knock, knock once. <laughs> like, this just feels, how funny's the joke? Could you print it out and uh, fax it over? It doesn't read funny. Uh, Have you had anyone, like, producer-wise, when you've done TV or something, tell you you can't do a joke? Did, like, a- a- any specials? Have you had to take anything out? or uh, Not specials, no. But, yeah, fucking stand-up routines. Absolutely, I've been told that I can't do... Uh, jokes on the BBC, but no, they can't do jokes on Channel 4. Like, um, I did live at the Palladium a couple of years ago, and I think I was like, there was real pro because I want to talk about smoking. I've got a joke about smoking weed because I smoke weed and have done for most of my life. Um, and I don't think it's a bad thing, and I want to talk about it because I've got a good joke. And they were like, You can't talk about it, man. What's on the BBC? And I was like, But you, but you. But you can and nobody cares. This is like, you know, the only reason it has power is because you're making it uh, to boom. And yeah, they get really weird stuff. They'll cut out jokes. Uh, I remember I did the Paul O'Grady show. It was my first ever TV break when I was 17. I remember that, you know. The, uh, I remember saying that because my mum used to watch that. Oh God. So I'd come home from like sixth form or something and you were on it. 
just doing stand up for no world reason. World. <laughs> <laughs> and it was, it was for no reason. But I used to have a joke when I was talking about like me and my dad having a misunderstanding. Like, I think he's talking about sex, but he thinks he's talking about shaving. And one of the lines is, oh, well, the first time you do it, there's going to be a little bit of blood. Right, and they were like, "Blood's just too visual for all right." So you can, you can, you, can you just say "mess"? And I'm like, "The first time you do it, there's going to be lots of mess. That's worse. Blood's, <laughs> blood's way tamer. Mess you, could be jizz. Yeah, yeah. Mess is way, way, way mess more. Mess could be a combination of blood, blood, blood jizz, and shit. Yeah. <laughs> just start everywhere, <laughs> pasted all over the walls. What was that? Blizzle, blizzle, blizzle. Blood. Blood, shit. <laughs> Sounds like blizzism. Blizzism. Sounds like an MC. Blizzism. MC Blizzism. A, a Jewish MC. <laughs> <laughs> um, what were next Netflix like? I mean, the rumor is that they're just like, do what the fuck you want. Yeah, I mean, they never, they didn't, I mean, we, uh, <laughs> they didn't ask for anything. But this Jigsaw, we just, we filmed that to their specifications and uh, um, just sent it through and they were like, yeah, that's, we'll absolutely take that. They didn't really want, care much about the material they trusted me as a comedian too they wanted a lot of it they wanted a lot of input on how it was filmed and that side of things which you know my agent was annoyed with but as a comedian i didn't give a shit but comedically they interfered with absolutely fuck all so what and it was just, great is that essentially just them wanting the specs to be right yeah yeah specs just like it needs to be this quality it needs to be this many angles and it, you know there's certain things about what you can and can't show i think but material not one single problem about material <laughs> Yeah, not Dream. a problem. Same with HBO. Uh, only problem with the only problem we ever uh, wasn't even a problem, but the only sort of hurdle we ever encountered with HBO was because the because the show X is about uh, I talk about sexual assault uh, because of I mean you know the story yeah um, uh, the whole show is about sexual assault and male complicity and all it all. Um, I had never put a trigger warning on the show X when we were touring it just because I didn't I was like if I put a trigger warning on the show I I think it'll like dissuade the type of person that's usually if you see a trigger warning you're like oh what kind of show is this that's got trigger warning on it yeah, yeah i yeah. know that reaction so i didn't want to do it because i thought it would you know isolate or, or or exclude people who i thought should see and enjoy the show from a neutral fucking perspective um and then eventually a bunch of women walked out of the show in san francisco not because they hated it but basically because i was talking about rape and they'd been raped and it came out of the blue and they were upset. So after a long discussion about them, I was like, every day before the show, I'll get Kai to mention, not do a public trigger warning, but Kai will do one just before I go on stage explaining that these are the topics that come up just so that people who have gone through something like that have time to emotionally prepare themselves for listening to the most dramatic thing in the world. And it worked. And I, it was one time where I was wrong because I'd really fought against trigger warning for a bit with people. And then that was enough for me to make me go, okay, right, fine. And then we approached HBO with the same thing, and they were like, "Yeah, they made a trigger warning," <laughs> and we were like, oh, but "It's going down on national television, and it's about sexual assault." And the thing is, like, quite a lot of people have been sexually assaulted, so it's nice to warn them. And they were like, "Ah, we think it'll be fine." But they they once I had one phone call with them and explained it to the guy, they were like, "Oh, right, sorry." It was one of those things where it almost got yeah, yeah, yeah. wrapped up in the we don't normally. They did do what it, so you were doing a year before yeah. when you were going. No, you don't need a trip, but then you I understood it. it. Yeah, 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 yeah. It was explained to you, the same thing. We yeah. talked about people walking out because they hear trigger words and subject matter, but it, I'm absolutely you, fine with it as long as you just like you just you, go away. And yeah, every every single every single person that ever ever, and I spoke to every single person that left my show ex like because of uh, this guy. Every single one of them, it wasn't because they were angry or upset for you. It's, it's because. You know, you, you you don't get to choose how some people react to things, right? You're right? Even though something, like, might not mean, like, diabetes. You might not give a fucking shit about diabetes. But somebody in the audience says their dad could have fucking died of diabetes, right? Yeah, yeah. Now, it doesn't mean none of us should do diabetes jokes. And it doesn't mean they should be fucking banned. Uh, it doesn't give this person a right to stand up and be like, you can't fucking joke about it. But I do think there should be some more empathy and understanding where... You just go, ah, right, I can understand. And I'm so, I'm genuinely sorry that me bringing up this topic did upset you. Because obviously as a comedian, that was never my intention. But And so I'm going to apologise for bringing up this thing and not warning you about it. As long as you're also willing to admit that you know that's not what I fucking meant. <laughs> you know that I intended it as a joke, right? Even though it didn't come across as that, and I've, I've taken my responsibility for that. You've got to admit that you know I wasn't being like, murder's the best. All people with... Fuck the dyslexics. You know what I meant. Yeah, yeah. I'm, ex I'm on the exact same page. If you're upset by something and you go 
I, I'm not really into this. And you just quietly fuck off. Perfect. Everyone's a winner. You're not listening to the thing that upsets you anymore. I can still keep doing what I want to do at my show. You're in my house. So if you don't like it, you leave. I don't leave. Then that's absolutely sound. It's when... it's. I, I th- I'm sure I mentioned this exact quote here the last time we spoke about it, but it's so many episodes ago. I'm pretty sure Joe Rogan said something like, trying to get people who are laughing at a joke to get upset at a joke is like being in a restaurant and trying to get everyone else to hate the food <laughs> just because you don't like it. It's like, I, to this, stop this everyone linguine eating. is awful. And everyone's like, no, well, we're actually quite enjoying it. Like, no, you, no one should like this linguine. <laughs> right. It's, yeah. it was, Mine's was undercooked, therefore yours all must be <laughs> undercooked. I'm going to save us all from yeah, it. The thing is, I've I get I get a lot of walkouts because I've got this real this edgy bit about the Olympics in 2012, <laughs> <laughs> and uh, a lot of people can't handle that. So it's just the comics yeah. in it. <laughs> 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 you see the rest of the bill just go he's doing that again uh, fuck that fucking brutal well, we, that, is, uh, that, is a, that is a hard thing to see as a comedian that's that is the worst type of walkout when a comedian leaves the back of the room well i think phones are fucking brutal for that because you think you're being sound yeah but all of a sudden you're like what's the blue light i recognize that bored looking face <laughs> oh there's four of them it's just the comedian's like oh God. <laughs> just a load of cunts bored of your material on yeah. Instagram, and they occasionally they'll just when they when they when they hear a joke of yours that they've not heard before, they just go, ha! <laughs> 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 just so that you go, they were there, and that's enough. Yeah, <sighs> it's funny, isn't it? With, where, with comics laughing, you can you you've got, you're aware that audience members are looking at you. You you can potentially be seen by other comics. It's quite a high. You can understand why comics just like I want to be in the dressing room and not have to do it because especially <laughs> if someone if you're like if you're at a comedy club and people are like oh it's Daniel Sloss then and you clock them even if you're trying to just watch the show mm. then you're aware that they're watching you watch the show. It's like oh god. Yeah. So now if you're just not laughing like God he's a moody cunt isn't yeah. he? <laughs> <laughs> he hot. does not enjoy jokes about terrible palsy. What a hypocrite! What an absolute. <laughs> Yeah, and then there's people who laugh too much. And you're like, "All right, fella, I we, we you, just you uh, get it." <laughs> yeah, you've sold me off for that before, haven't you? Like when I just lose it laughing, and he's like, "It's like you're trying to let the comic know that you get it." <laughs> yeah, I because some... my laugh's so distinct. I'm like, <laughs> I but I I I laugh like that sometimes, especially when the comic's doing bad. Because, and I know this isn't true, but it is true. The audience is fucking wrong. There's so many times when, like, there's a great comedian on stage doing a bit that is fucking killer, and the audience aren't laughing. And as a professional comedian, and it's my job to be funny, so I am the expert in this room. You want to go around to these people and go, "It fucking is funny. This is hysterical. <laughs> this is," br-. and that's what the the laughter is. Is if you like, I feel that if I laugh loud enough, other people will know that it's okay to laugh, especially because I'm laughing so profoundly at it. I think that might be worse than like Daniel Snoth isn't laughing rather than you going. <laughs> <laughs> we all find pedophilia funny come on um shall we do some would you rathers adam do you want to yeah 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 have yeah. you got one all right am i doing no, these you, you've got them yeah i've got yeah. to have a word for us in a bit um would you rather we do would you rathers it's good <laughs> you know like what well, i me and kind of would you rather on our podcast they're great we i love fucking love a would you rather it's, it's a fun easy way to ignite a debate oh well thank you for that little peek behind the curtain there daniel <laughs> <laughs> we'll put that on the dvd extras that's for the patreon listeners <laughs> just <laughs> one for the fucking insiders but we've run out of them can't think of any so now we just let the listeners do it and it sometimes works interestingly would you rather uh, your cock size is halved but everyone that sees it thinks it's twice as big as it originally was or your cock size is doubled but anyone that sees it sees it half the size that it was right. originally I, I can tell you right now that i know that he's got a massive <laughs> dick well thanks for listening everyone <laughs> i mean i've heard kai describe it as a baguette <laughs> without oh. even blinking so I, this is the worst question to ask I would so I would like a smaller penis yeah anything but if I was if you were to double the length of my deck I'd kill someone so I'll, <laughs> I'll go for that and, I, and yeah, I've also same here, I've, mate. <laughs> <laughs> I've also had 10 years of people knowing I have a big dick so it's yeah, if, yes. if for the next 10 years people think I've got a small dick fair play, fair nah, play. it's the same answer for me 
Couldn't double this bad boy. <laughs> what would you wear? <laughs> <laughs> Fucking pricks. But he had a medical penis reduction, apparently. <laughs> you did. I, if I go half, uh, I go honestly, home. I basically don't have a dick for the winter. When I was a kid, I had, <laughs> it, I'd have a hibernation, hibernation penis. <laughs> just go, baby, like, oh. baby, we 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 can't ha- we can't have a summer baby. We just can't. <laughs> <laughs> During those months, we are it. not going to conceive October <laughs> like to March. Yeah. You shove yours in me because we might as well see what happens. Because I assure you, yeah. this stop being a dick round about November. <laughs> Spring, the flowers are budding, and here comes Dan's two-inch dick, all sleepy from the winter. It's Morning like, has broke. Your, your first erection is like Groundhog Day, it like symbolizes the end of the long winter. <laughs> Bill Murray comes out to check if Dan's got his erection every morning. Oh, there it is. a tiny dick. Like, oh my God. Like, how it. big is it? Like, use this. Show us on the doll. <laughs> <laughs> you got a it's pencil shot there. <laughs> it's, it's not big. Let's get a pink one. It's not. In and around. Uh, within a margin of error. So you'd have to half it? No. Would you be happy if it halved? Is it that big? No, no. I like it's a, I like the size that it is. It's a good how any bigger would be terrible. But any, that's what everyone says. That's what my wife tells me. It fits perfectly. <laughs> It fits perfectly. It's I mean, o- I have a tiny my, my vagina. My vagina is oversized. It's like wearing an oversized hoodie. Honestly, do you know when you put on a hoodie that's just so big <laughs> and you get lost in it? Yeah, I've got a TARDIS fanny. I'm small on the outside, but I swear to God, once a, you better give your sperms a map because jeez, oh. <laughs> fuck? I would like to conceive, but unless there's an Uber from dick to fucking eggs. It's just, it could end up anywhere. I want to need, and I swear, I just, it's all connected to all of it. A TARDIS fanny. Doctor, who's in there? Who's in there? Oh, God. I laughed a lot there. Um, you know, the podcast is called Have a Word. Yeah. Should we do some Have a Words as well? Or do you want to do that? Do have you want- got a, didn't you have another Would You Rather? Oh, sorry. Yeah, yeah, I did. Um, but 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 no, no, no. Oh, have you got one? No, you've got to have a word. I've got to have a word. Yeah, we really prepped this bit, Dan. I don't know what <laughs> BBC Radio Swindon are like, but we really worked. It, <laughs> oh no, we've got that bit of advice. Oh, this, on. Yeah, this on. is this fucking rarely people actually ask for advice. Like, have a word is meant to be us sort of passing judgment on people's friends and family when they're being a bit of a fucking bell end. Mm. But this one is from a listener who's asked to be anonymous and uh, genuinely wants some advice. All right. Uh, wonder if you lids could give me some advice. I've changed their names as I'm not sure what to do and could also keep my name off the pod. We will. Um, I just want to mention the names. My sister is married with three young kids. She's a care worker. So she's been working throughout lockdown, usually 12 hour shifts with very little time off. Her husband has been furloughed. No judgment. Uh, so is home all the time. So my wife's sister is single and she's on dating websites and recently discovered that this guy, my sister's husband is on Tinder looking for other women. So we all know now. So my wife says, we should just leave it as it's not our place to interfere. But I want to tell my sister as I would want to know if my other half was on dating sites behind my back. I don't want to confront him as I'd be scared of beating the living shit out of him. I also thought of catfishing him, but don't know how to make the big reveal. The thought of him messaging other women while she's caring for the elderly um, and dying is making me livid. Any thoughts and ideas are welcome. I'm telling you right now, his wife is on Tinder as well. If there's, a woman who doesn't want to get involved with this drama is like, no, we should leave it. She's she's fucking hiding and something. <laughs> right, so that's, that's where your head or went you, to instantly. So you reckon she has, she's projected that into her own life. She's like, I've got to be against this so that he's very aware that I'm not doing this even though she is. Is that what you're saying? No, so the, the guy who's wrote in, yeah. it's his sister's fella. Isn't it? Who's on the thing? Potentially cheating on but him. But the guy who's written in, his wife has said, "Leave it, leave it." Yeah. Leave it. So, so his wife, his wife, 
You think she's che- on Tinder? <laughs> she's on Tinder because she's going, no, just leave it. There's no way. I, I've never met a girl in my life who would be dealt with this situation and go, I'm not getting involved. <laughs> that that has got secret spies written all over it. <laughs> it There's just no like, way. Yeah, yeah, leave it, love. It's boring. Anyway, what are we watching on TV tonight? <laughs> I'm not having it. Bullshit. Also, uh, wait, just... Wait, wait. Hey, I've, I've, I'm just one sec. She's shagging someone, mate. I'm telling you right now. <laughs> Poor bloke just writes in to get some advice. Dear Agni, um, <laughs> just sat in his car and be like, I can't believe, I can't believe Adam and Dan are going to answer my question. It's been plaguing my mind for the last week. What to do? My poor sister. I love her so much. <laughs> Linda! <laughs> <laughs> just in traffic, tears streaming down his face. <sighs> She's shagging someone. I'm, I'm, I'm telling you. Would you get involved, regardless of what yes. your wife's up to? Would if you be like- my sister was, yeah, yeah. I've got a cousin who's like a sister to me. Her name's Dolly. If I, if I found out her fellow was on Tinder, yeah, absolutely. Do you go to her or do you go to him? I'd go and batter him and then I'd go to her with his blood mm. in a bag. Just fucking, I'd punch the cancer out of him. <laughs> <laughs> what would you do? Uh, yeah, just go to her, fuck him. Just go to, go to her and go, hey, there you go. Like that's, I, I assume you've broken up now. Let's all move on together and then just not fucking acknowledge the cunt. But they've got three kids together, haven't they? It's, it's three young kids. It's high wire Put them stuff, on Tinder. Can, is that how it works? You can just put them on. <laughs> you've put got, them on got Tinder some really good options, haven't yeah. you? Prostitute the kids yeah. or your wife. Everyone's fucking everyone. <laughs> some pretty bleak <laughs> advice here. No, I didn't, mean, I didn't mean put the kids on Tinder to be like, to have sex with the kids, but just like, hey, me and my girlfriend broke up. Does anyone want these? <laughs> Like, you know, use it as an adoption. Like where, Facebook where Marketplace. The, yeah, where in the oh, Tinder? Why isn't there an adoption Tinder? Yeah. Because it's for shagging, not adoption. Right. No. Yeah, the kids on Tinder. But like, at the minute, adopt. with adoption, you just get fucking lumped with whatever they give you. If there was a Tinder, you'd be like, don't want that one. Don't like the look of that. Well, to be Fuck fair, I, th- kid. I think any adoption company, where if you were to walk in, you'd be like, by the way, I fundamentally care what the child looks like. They're going, well, in that case, in that case, you're not getting a child. In that case, there's no way we're giving you one of these neglected fatherless, motherless. <laughs> if your first question is, can I get a fucking fitty? Because fuck raising an uggo, you just don't get to adopt. It's not for, get a dog, rescue a dog. Little, I'm not little, saying little to Timmy, little Timmy but, you know, really needs a home. Like, if what? you were gonna adopt a kid, would you not want to look at it first? Would you not want to know? But Yes, but that's why I shouldn't be allowed to adopt because that's not how adoption <laughs> should work. It should be that at least- Because they don't give you a baby. You look, you're looking at getting like a 17, 18 place kid. Mm. Like by that age, you know what they're gonna look well, like. Well, but, but then it's not just, you're not just going off looks then. Once they've developed a person, I want to know what the kid's like as a, as a person. Do you want a video? Have a chat. Uh, well, then again, the kids can just catfish you. Maybe they're just, you know, if they I don't intend to. I Maybe love the like idea. A brochure. Is, are they still on? I love that they were trying to develop an app for a fucking, <laughs> for, a, for Bernardo's. <laughs> yeah, well, for well, a problem that does not exist. If you want a kid, it's an absolute nightmare going to see them. They're sad and they smell a little bit. Go on lonelychild.co.u UK. <laughs> swipe left to be interested in adoption, swipe right to give them yeah, yeah. a future also, of darkness. Every time you swipe left, we let the kid know <laughs> how many families have rejected- You got seven them. no's today, seven John. Seven no's. <laughs> oh, I can't believe it. <laughs> Did I anyone- just want mummy and daddy. <laughs> Did anyone's fingers like hesitate or hover? None, <laughs> none at all. We have all that information. And there's little Jamie how, in the corner going, oh God. How does it by seven families? Do you get given any pictures when you adopt? Yeah, 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 you do, yeah, you yeah. You get to meet the kid, it's no, not you do, like- you where, you, so, where, you, where, you, where, do you, where are you getting your kid from? <laughs> what do you need pictures from? They just from? deliver it like Amazon. You reckon Bezos oh, just fly- Are you getting an international fucking kid? I thought there kid? was a big book and then you wrote down what you want and I, you get them If out I'm the adopting, I definitely want someone from a horror place in the world that <laughs> makes me look gaunt. Because mm. one from Loughborough is fucking boring, isn't it? <laughs> oh, so oh where do you adopt from? Loughborough, Malawi. That's where I got my kid from, because I'm a better person than you with your Loughborough child. Yeah. Also, just like, if you get, if you, but imagine you were to get one. Imagine you would adopt a kid from Edinburgh and for them to come and judge your house. <laughs> <laughs> They'd be like, oh, is this where I have to live? Go back to the fucking home, then. I'd fucking hate to adopt a child from Edinburgh as he walks around and go, oh, Christ. Well, you say you get to meet Three the kid. stars for this fucking shit all. Although the internet is very cool. Quick. <laughs> I'll give you that. You say you get to meet them, but like after you've met them, can you say no? Yeah. 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 To the face, though. <laughs> yeah, you've got. Yeah. 
kind of tell. <laughs> they do. They do it like the voice. <laughs> Little Timmy comes in like, "Hello, I'm Timmy. My my parents were nice to me. <laughs> Better be fit." <laughs> Turns around, he's in a wheelchair. Nice. Oh. <laughs> hey, I fancy the parking. I fancy the parking. It does look. It does looks easier. Oh God, my ribs are hurting. <laughs> it's such a funny. Episode. You've got a tear under your eye. <laughs> We're talking about adoption and you're crying for the wrong reason. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. So, so uh, yeah, the, the, on a serious note, I'm, I hope I'm, everyone's all right. I'm genuinely asking you, right? So, right, so you've met the kid. Yeah. You don't fancy that one. As right. in, you don't want to take him, not yeah, that course, you don't yeah. want to fuck him. You don't want that kid. Can you say to the to that adoption agency, I don't want this one, but let's look at what else you've got in the back, or do you have to go to another adoption agency? In the back? <laughs> <laughs> in the back? In the stock room? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, so the four yeah, 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 no, I'll just check. We've got a wide range of colours. Um, <laughs> Have you got this in black? <laughs> Jesus Christ. I think there's, uh, you get to, you meet, you, meet, you, meet you the, don't know, Daniel. Don't know, Daniel. You don't represent the Adoption Board of Scotland. I love it. I was going, Adam, let me talk you through yeah, it. None of us know. Adam's going, Dan, can you tell us? <laughs> yeah, we've talked about Conan. That was fine. What about adoption? Yeah, look, if, look, if I were to run it, here's how it would work. I'd so love if to. me and Jade did adopt and we did get a black one, I would pretend forever that I was completely oblivious and that I thought it was mine. That would be a fun oh, bit. Oh, that'd be a good bit. It'd be funny, that wouldn't it? Just, Just forever. Every time you So did you guys adopt? No. No? No. Huh? Wait, so like, like a surrogacy or? Huh? No, no, he's just, that's our kid. Oh, huh? And so were you there? My the, sperm, Jane's vagina, woo, baby. <laughs> <laughs> Sex education with Adam Rowe. <laughs> oh God. <sighs> I'd like, uh, I'd like to, I, I Jamie would like to uh, adopt uh, just because I just think it's the only way Scotland will ever have a good football team. Oh! Where did you get it from? Oh, England. <laughs> it's like, just anyway. Oh, no. For me, I'm a genuinely true believer in like nurture over nature yeah. and recycling. So, And also, you don't want to give the world an, a child with a dick as big as yours. It's so, just not nurture fair, over nature. So, you think so, so you I, could I, I, teach a kid to be good at football rather than he's born with it? Oh, no, 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 sorry, sorry. I mean in the sense that, like, regardless of where I adopted the kid, it would be my kid. Like, once you've adopted a child, it's... Oh, um, sorry, I thought we were making a serious point. I thought we were doing jokes, and I'm, I'm like, doing a dick child joke. And we're like, nurture nature, everyone. Yeah. Like, yeah. Really, in my head, I was like, no, no, no that's a lovely point. Back, actually to, done. back to the dick joke. If, if my son didn't have my dick size, that's when I'd be going up to my girlfriend being like, who is he? <laughs> who is he? Why does my son have a tiny cock? Who is he? Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> who, is, who is he? Was he better than me? <laughs> Clearly not! <laughs> Clearly not! So what else was it? <laughs> nature nurture though, yeah? Nature nurture, yeah. yeah, it's, yeah, just, yeah nature. it's all about... I've got to have a word. So we, can we just, what's oh, the yeah. advice? And oh, we just go and say... Uh, look, no, so our advice is to adopt, wasn't it? That was the advice. That's what totally. We I think advice we is to get rid of these free kids, find three more on the app, right? and then tell his sister to fuck him off. I can't. You've if, got to go and tell us. You have got, to tell. You've got to go and tell us. Christmas is coming. The goose and is do it fat. before Christmas because it's going to be cracker, Christmas is cracker, coming, and the then it's going to blow in it. Ed husband's on the Tinder because he's a dirty fucking rat. Wow, those rat battles Baz. have done you well, haven't they? Aye, I'd, Baz. I'd gently break it to your sister and oh, why? <laughs> or download <laughs> Tinder onto her phone and then just. Oh, okay, she'd know. Or do a gender just reveal where you her. pop the bloom and it's just a photo of him on Tinder. I'd do it privately, though. I wouldn't go around and have a scene. I'd just go, mate, I've got some fucking shitty news you can do with what you want, but this is happening. Don't be like, through the fucking uh, Tuesday you'll night. You'll never guess who's cheating <laughs> yeah, on you. Swatting dominoes everywhere. <laughs> Everyone, living room, family meeting. <laughs> Not family for long, though. <laughs> <laughs> have we got an actual have a word? Can I play the theme tune? You can't go. Yeah, you can't hear it, Dan. So. Right, I'm probably not going to do that because Dan can't fucking. Oh yeah, I can. We I need can to. Hear his, oh, can you? Friends, this was gonna be the whole podcast. Now it's just the final ten percent. I've loved today. This has been a fucking belter. I've loved Things it. Dead good, Danny. Funny, oh. funny, funny. So, uh, you. just before I read this, right, you should know our listeners. Uh, we never really set this up at all, but they started just emailing in, but they would choose. 
not our names. To, so I'd be like Alan yeah. and Denzel. Oh, this someone is- missed. Someone call me Dave accidentally, and that's yeah. how. And now we're getting Adnad and Denai. And mm. well, today we've got hello Abercrombie and Ditch. Oh, nice. That's good. Yeah, nice. Your Ditch. All right. <laughs> <laughs> Thinking that's the thing that was going to break me. The fuck, where have you been for 90 episodes? Your ditch. Yeah. Have a fucking minute. <laughs> I can't really go, too far. I mean, the adoption thing was funny. Uh, dear accident <laughs> and detergency. No. Detergency. <laughs> <laughs> Stay down. <laughs> Have a grand me and ditch. Have a word with my brother for me. He's an absolute liability. Whenever we're on a night out, he can't just have four pints and go home. He has to have 30 bevies. Just <laughs> such a <laughs> scouse email. <laughs> he, he can, never, ju- he can never just have four and drive home. <laughs> <laughs> Four's not that many. To drive home? No, but it's not that many to just... Oh, no, I agree. No. <laughs> he has to have 30 bevies. He's out till 6, 7, 10 a.m. Basically, it's impossible to... Un- basically, until it's impossible he's to get out the bevies, out is he? <laughs> he's <laughs> he's 6, 7, 10 a.m. He loves pale ale. <laughs> <laughs> the, Sometimes he goes, man, two days? Man, you should see how chatty this guy is on a Guinness, lads. So honestly, <laughs> after the couple. Oh, <laughs> Pints! Ah! <laughs> you know when you just had four gin and tonics and you want to go dancing for hours? <laughs> Lads, I can't just have four. Yeah, look, you know what? I now believe he's only having four pints. <laughs> mm, I love Bacardi Breezers. <laughs> <sighs> he then spends his next week borrowing money to survive on shite food and cigs. I wonder then what he get- spent it on. <laughs> he's, yeah, he's an absolute fiend, mate. <laughs> Very apparent. He then gets paid, he pays whoever he owes, and it starts all over again. Can you tell him to grow up? He's 24, nearly 25. He needs to get himself a beard, calm down, rather than shagging any coked-up troll who'll let him every single weekend. He's had so many STDs, I'm pretty sure he's immune to COVID because he's basically part man, part antibiotic. He loves the podcast, and he's more likely to listen to you than any of the lads. Thanks from Connor Whitehall. Coked-up troll. <laughs> I love them girls. <laughs> I'm not tired. No, you're not. <laughs> Neither am I. Where should we go? Well, it's nowhere with this dick. Because <laughs> it just turned out it's the winter season. <laughs> in July? Yes, in July. Yes, in July. What, what do you reckon? Um, well, I mean, c- can you stop a 24-year-old? You, uh, is the question to try and convince a 24-year-old to stop doing cocaine and drink? <laughs> yeah, oh, yeah, sure, I'll give that a go. Uh, no, that, he'll no way definitely I- listen to you guys. Yeah. As if he's going to listen to the whole of this episode, all of the <laughs> shite we've just chatted and go, yeah, I'm going to change my ways. <laughs> That's it, the church. Oh, just wear a condom, you fucking idiot. I've. Th- this is like talking about my life, isn't it? I can't have four. Like, I can have three and go home, but that fourth one, yeah. that's the tipping point, that, and then I'm out till Tuesday. I can't, man. It's going to, in my experience, in my experience, I remember when I was drinking back in the old, oh, oh, oh two, different time. Oh two, different time. Um, it's going to fizzle out when it fizzles out. You can't, he's either going to have to do something so bad that it part fucks up his life and it makes him realise or it will gradually fizzle out. You can't come in as a brother and be like, may change your ways. It doesn't work like that. In very little, in the history of all boozy, coked up 24 year olds, has a older brother gone, you really, honestly, it's your liability. As if he's going to go, yeah, you're right. It's just, as long as he's not going to kill himself, like, it might, it's, also, it's also, yeah, it's when people have retired giving you like, hey, you should stop, and you go, but you didn't. Yeah. <laughs> so why, why don't I just do it for five more years? Like, you didn't retire then, and you're like, yeah, yeah, yeah. okay, so yeah. <laughs> no, you right. just need to meet any bird, because that can never end badly. <laughs> I know you do coke and drink, but just meet any girl. <laughs> that will sort yeah. you, I mean, I don't know any bad relationships. They started with low self-esteem and a coke addiction. <laughs> 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 we still commit. It can help though sometimes to meet a girl and calm yourself down a bit. Jade's defo calmed me down a lot. Yeah, but you met Jade. You didn't meet a girl. You, you yeah. meeting the right person, whether it's girl, boy, or whatever, or someone on the binary spectrum. I'm changing. Um, if you meet a they, yeah, 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 yeah cool. Go on. Um, 
it's t- it's not the meeting of that person that's going to sort you out. If you meet the right, if you meet someone you really like and that happens, but you can't just be like, ah, I'm a big cokehead and I'm drinking all the time. I just need any fucking girlfriend. Because yeah. gonna- cause women are all sane and on the right track. All yeah, of them famous. You're just going to end so up being- there's, a- <laughs> there's, no, there's no way that the type of woman who would love me a coked up mess is also a coked up mess. She's clearly a lawyer or a doctor just waiting to fix me. Yeah. Just bored. <laughs> just bored of her job of being That's a woman that she just wants me to stumble into her life and be like, hey, give him five years. <laughs> yeah. I can maybe be a dad. Yeah, I'm, a highly, I'm a highly educated career you woman, could, but I need a project. Invest, you yeah. could invest like, like that's a good way to go to get someone out your league. Maybe he's really attractive. Maybe like a real ugly lawyer could be like, if I invest in him for five years, I'll have a really good looking, well put together boyfriend at the end. Hey, no, what you're going to do then is be a drinker who does coke, who has an angry girlfriend. <laughs> Just be a fucking boozer who does coke. Don't don't involve a woman who is now going to be constantly disappointed with you. No, I, stop, don't make, don't make, don't drag her down with you. Go down in flames alone, <laughs> like a king. Have some fucking respect for the fairer sex. Do it alone and go out swinging. <laughs> That's my advice. Fucking, you know what? Get another bag. Fuck it. You know what? It's 2020. We're probably, America is going to cease to exist as a country next year. Get another bag. And just yeah, do it. it well, yeah. Yeah. So it's not, that's my advice to him. Fuck it. America's Fuck it. 100%. Yeah. China's looking moody. The US is on the ropes. COVID's a fucking nightmare. Get another bag. Lean into it. Nice yeah. one. <laughs> Oh God! Got a tune to. Is that us? Is that end of end of business? I mean, we probably need a break, don't we? Oh, Daniel Sloss, what a fucking pleasure it's Thanks been. Genuinely, so much for me. I think we made some interesting points around some rather hilarious. Bullshit. I can't remember what any of them were. Uh, we close out with a song on the audio. Good. Would you like me to sing it? Uh, yeah, it's <laughs> <laughs> it's my way. <laughs> uh, fuck it, as Mark Nelson. I fucking did it, maybe. <laughs> Um, <laughs> this is our first ever drum and bass track sent in by Chris Townsend, who is a uh, bass Jedi, uh, who's a absolute Hall of Famer and listener. Uh, it's by North Bass. It's called Light It Up, featuring the Melody Men. Uh, it's out today. You can purchase it on Beatport. North Bass, N O R T H B A S E. North Bass. Check it out. Absolute tune. Daniel Sloss, thanks for coming in. What a fucking pleasure that's been. Ah, oh, that's a good one. They're going to enjoy that. Uh, if you are uh, watching on the video version, please go and get some merch or something from HaveAwayPod.com. An extra episode every single week on Patreon.com slash HaveAwayPod. Bye, Felicia. Bye, Felicia.